Mic check, mic check. Hello. Mic check one, two. How's it going, everyone? Welcome. Welcome back to the stream. Just wait for some more people to come in. Notification squad. How's it going, Jack? Welcome, mate. Sound is perfect. Good, 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 good. I've kind of, uh, well, I've kind of broke one of my microphones. <laughs> oh god, I've had to use my spare microphone. It sucks. Let's just put it this way: I um, kind of melted it. <laughs> I kind of melted it. Oh god, uh, it's only a sixty-pound microphone down the. Friggin' drain. Never mind. It's a good job I've got two. Hey. How's it going, uh, beginner? Welcome, mate. How's it going, Stephen? Chakib? Xbox downloads to 68% then stops. Um, possibly disk drive, mate. Possibly disk drive. Uh, if not disk drive, then... Possibly hard drive, but most likely disk drive. Uh, I've got an Xbox One with no power in front of me, mate. Yeah, the subs are going. Uh, subs are going great. Absolutely fantastic. The subs are going. Yeah. Cut and resold. Nah, no, I'll just buy a new one. I'll, I've got a spare anyway. Uh, but these are not cheap microphones, so I might, I might, I might repair it. I don't know. I might repair it. But yeah, they're not cheap microphones, so it's kind of annoyed me a little bit. Hello, Sarah. How's it going, Zed? How's it going? How's it going, Com? Micro, welcome, mate. Got the coffee out of seat. Welcome, buddy. Uh, the disk drive, it depends. It depends if it's the... Um, it depends if it's the disk drive or if it's the disk drive daughter board. Most of the time, it's a disk drive daughter board. Oh, I've never seen someone accidentally switch the uh, SATA ports. Uh, yeah, I thought I replied to you, um, Shakib. Um, sorry, mate. I dropped it off at the um, at the local shop earlier, so it should be with you on Tuesday or Wednesday, I think, because of the three day postage. I'd say Tuesday or Wednesday, mate. Um, but yeah, I thought I replied to you, mate. Ninety-one percent. Um, you'd have to check the logs on that one. I've never come across a ninety-one percent. Beginner, it would have to have a hard drive in it to be able to install the software, mate. Unless he's got an SSD in it. Um, if he's got an SSD in it, then realistically you shouldn't get a hard drive ever, because it's an SSD. Uh, yeah, 91%. Um, I've never come across that, mate, to be honest. Um, you'd have to check the error logs for that. Uh, so you'd have to plug the, con the hard drive back into the console and check the error, error logs. Um, I can't remember what partition the error logs are actually in. How's it going, Michael? Good to see you, bud. Oh no, it still comes up that you. It still comes up on WhatsApp that it's you, mate. Um, yeah, I know what you mean, mate. Yeah. Um, so basically, they just plugged it into the wrong one. Uh, I've never come across that. Uh, right, let's crack this open. Well, let's see what's wrong with it first, actually. So this has been sent in for no power. Let me just cover up the customer's name. I don't want to dox anyone. Uh, so yeah, Xbox One S. It says internal power supply replacement, but Console Repair London would have tried that, and it won't be. It won't be the uh, unless they got really unlucky and they had a dodgy power supply. Then it's most likely going to be an internal issue on the board. So I'll plug it in. I'll see what's going on, and uh, then we'll see if we can figure out what's actually wrong with it. 
fixed four pounds yesterday. All all sold today, hundred and ten pound each. Nice. Right, that's a pretty that's a pretty good return on investment, mate. To be honest, that's a very good return on investment. Uh, yeah. Um, well, before I actually do that, because I want to try and get this as a video. Um, yeah. So basically, when we when we're trying to update the operating system, there's certain stages. Because if you think about it, the the way that the Xbox system installs is coded. Um, so it's obviously code that's run, and basically it has to run through that script in stages. So it'll be like, um, if variable meet variable, then do this. If not, then do this sort of thing. So it's like, basically, a script is it's just going to be an if or else. Um, if one thing, then do this thing. Then And if another thing, then do this thing. So it'll be like, at 0%, it'd say something like, um, no, let, me, let, me, let me try and show you in actual text. Uh... So basically, when you got, like, let's say for example you were, uh, let's say for example this was the Xbox script, the Xbox install script, um, and it would be like something like if if hard drive exists equals equals zero, then go to step two for example and if it doesn't hit equal zero well actually no if hard drive exists equals one would be go to step two and if it doesn't equals if it doesn't equal one so if if, if the hard drive exists isn't true then You know, throw a new exception with a 100 error code or something like that. Um, and then it would basically be like, step two would be the same and it's a, and it's a check for like the disk drive and stuff like that. But it would have to do that at certain percentages. So you get that, get that at like 0% and then at 1% it would check like the partitions. And that would be another step. And then it would say, yep, partitions, partitions are correct. So step three, move on, move on to step three and... Basically, um, copy the files over from the USB to the system update, um, and then it'll say when the when the partitions are complete, um, move on to step four, and then step four will be start installing the system update folder onto the main operating system partition, um, and then once it's installed the main update, it'll say well. Is the disk drive valid, and so on and so forth. But you get certain percentages. So, like seventy-two percent is generally the disk drive. Fifty-nine percent is generally where it checks to make sure that the hard drive is valid for a second time. Uh, but you get certain percentages. So it's kind of like pattern recognition. You get you get you kind kind of get used to the certain percentages that it gets um, that it checks for certain things at. It's just stages. Um, so you basically just recognize what percentage at and say oh well hang on a minute last time i had this percentage it was this error um and i've noticed that 59 percent is generally going to be uh, a hard drive partitioning error um or a hard drive corruption error uh, so you know zero percent is hard drive failed error one percent is hard drive partition error 59 percent is hard drive um corruption error and then 72% is disk drive error. Um, so as you get as you go through those stages, just look at the logs, and it generally tells you what's what. Do I have any circuit diagrams? No, not for the stuff that I work on, mate. Not for the stuff stuff I work on. Uh, thank you, Alex. I appreciate that, mate. People send me stuff, no other person will repair. Pretty much, mate, yeah. Pretty much. Anchor Nebula, I don't know if you've heard of it. I haven't. Um, um, if he's got weak Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, it could be the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module, or it could be um, the antennas, I'm guessing. But I've never heard of it, unfortunately.
yeah, it would be nice to see um, some sort of exploit on the Xbox One. How's it going, Steve? Uh, st Steve? I went to say Steve and Smith at the same time. <laughs> I called you Steve. <laughs> How's it going, Steve? Nice to see, nice to see you, mate. I'm good, thanks, mate. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, no, put no public somatics, unfortunately. Uh, Dad and lad watching. Oh, good, good. Welcome, guys. Uh, yeah, so I'm working on this Xbox One S. Um, I'll get to a repair. Stops at step three. If that, if that stops at step three, that's usually 59%. That's usually a hard drive corruption error of some sort. Ever thought of making a course? No, I don't really want to step on Tronic Fix's toes for that. Uh, Stiffy. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't. I don't really want to step on Steve, on um, Steve from Trying to Fix His Toes for that because he's already got a course which he sells, or I think he sells it. Um, and Steve's been really good to this channel. I, I wouldn't want to step on his toes on that. <coughs> I'm not sure if he sells it or if he gives it away for free. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. I've never looked at it because obviously I don't need it, but I might have a look at it one day and then review it. Working through the queue, yeah, pretty much, mate. Well, these are London ones. These are uh, these are London ones. Fifty viewers already. Damn. Welcome, everyone. Yeah. So this one has been sent in for no power, and it's already had the power supply checked by London. So London's confirmed that it's good, but I don't use the power supply anyway. I use my bench power supply, so that's not going to be an issue for me. So let's see what happens then. So let's try and turn it on. Hmm. Oh, well, that's a good start. That's not no power. That's uh, beep on beep off. Lovely. Beep on beep off is not good. Especially when it takes that time. Oh, the rest is paid. Okay. How's it going, RB? Good to see you, buddy. How's it going, uh, Stephen? I'll have to call you Stephen because there's another Steve in the chat. Uh, no, well, could be Southbridge, yes. Um, if it's Southbridge, it's not, it's not worth fixing because I haven't got any Southbridge tips for these. Um, it's 508 solder balls. So I'll have a quick look at this one inside, but it's not looking promising because um, basically when we get a beep on beep off, that could be a RAM issue. Uh, but when we get a beep on and then turn off after about three seconds then a lot of the time that is an APU issue. In fact, most of the time it's an APU issue. But I'll have a look inside and I'll see what's going on. Let's just try it once more. Let's time it. Six seconds then off. Could be South Bridge, could be APU. Uh, I mean, it could be something completely unrelated. It could be liquid damage, but it don't look promising when it's a six seconds then off. Five to six seconds then off is not promising. Uh, right, so that's very damaged, so t that is noted. I'll get winged out when the serial numbers get scratched, but... Yeah, six seconds and off is not looking promising for this one. And this will be the third one I've worked on today, and, and uh, I didn't fix the other two, so... Never mind. Love the channel, thank you, mate, I appreciate that. Word of mouth is the best way to grow, yeah, I agree. How's it going, Tyler, mate? Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, hard drive corruption will mean you need to wipe it completely, yeah. Yeah, so these five seconds and off, they're just... They're not good, and you'll find that occasionally it will turn on, but most of the time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna almost guarantee. Well, I wouldn't say guarantee, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say with a bit of confidence that this is gonna be missing 3.3 volt, 1.8 volt, and 1.1 volt. Um, all three of them rails probably gonna be gone. Um, if those, if those are gone, I'm putting it back together. I'm not working on it because I'm not sitting there and reboarding a safe bridge. Um, I don't have any replacement safe bridges. 
available. Um, and half the time when you take a safe bridge off the Xbox One, it kills it. So, chances are I'll be reboiling it for nothing, unfortunately. So it'll be one of them cases. If this is missing 3.3 volt and 1.8 volt, I'll check the um, voltage regulator. I'll replace the voltage regulator. And if that doesn't fix it, then it'll be back together and no fix. Um, it's one of them things with these things. This is again. This comes under pattern recognition. I'm kind of used to seeing it. Um, it comes under pack pattern reg recognition. It could also be the retimer. I will put that out there. It could also be the retimer. Um, so if it's not the retimer and it's not the voltage regulator that's close to the um, SATA port, then it's probably going to be the safe bridge. Or the APU. We're not going to have a short on 12 volt because it turns on. Or at least it's very unlikely that we've got a short on 12 volt. How's it going, Ken? How's it going, Mark? Uh, do, do, do. Tony, welcome, mate. And uh, NGG as well, welcome. <laughs> the soldering iron, mate. Mate, the amount of the amount of melts I've got on this coat now—it's literally just my working work, my work coat now. Look at this. I've got one there. This is literally just my work coat now. Um. Where's the rest of them? All over there. This is how many times I burn myself. This is, by the way, like the amount of times it's—it's it's just unreal. You know what I find funny? Talking about burns, because I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of hot rocks from um, smoking drugs. When you, when the um, end of the cig drops on you and burns your clothes. Someone mess someone's left a comment on one of the videos earlier, on the Tronic Fix video and said I need to stop taking drugs and I'm like what the, f what the hell are you on about? What makes you think I take drugs? <laughs> I don't touch the things. <laughs> oh, it made me laugh. Am I single? No. Blim burns. <laughs> Biggest melt is the one wearing the coat. Uh, bollocks. <laughs> I'm going to behave this kid's watching. Seem to be fixing the same chip. It's always the same thing, mate. Yeah. How's it going, Stairs? Good to see you, buddy. Welcome from Austria, mate. Welcome. Nice to see some diversity in the um, streams. It really is. 70 viewers is pretty sweet. Right. Uh, switch over to the T9. Man, I hate this. This is so tedious. <clears throat> Welcome, Mick, mate. How's it going, bud? Scotland. I've never been there. And <laughs> 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 I'll behave. I'll try and behave. I'll behave if beginner DJ stops picking on me. Living in France, nice. 
to get one bowl. I'm not sure what you mean, mate. How do I know about hot rocks? <laughs> My dad was a pothead. <laughs> well, I should remove the was and replace it to is a. My dad smoked it all his life. I don't see the point in it, to be honest. I tried it when I was a kid, didn't like it, didn't try it again. Nope. Nope. Right, let's have a look at this um, share of shambles, shall we? Try saying that ten times fast. Uh, one terrible bite hard drive. <coughs> Whoops. Felt going already. Lovely. Right on schedule. Power supply can GTFO. There we go. Disk drive. Someone just fell out of there. I'm not sure what it was. How's it going, Jinxie? Jason's wife said he hadn't allowed out to play today. No, I prefer to do it manually, mate, because I know how much tension I'm putting on the screwdrivers, on the screws. Then I know I'm not going to damage anything if I do it by hand, so I'd rather just do it by hand. I'd much rather do it by hand. It's just me, though. It's just personal choice. Um, let's have a look. How do I always miss a screw? Is that what someone was on about in chat? Brave to fix live. Yeah, it takes a lot of concentration to be able to do it live, yeah. <coughs> right. No signs of liquid. Right, let me fire up the bench supply so I'm going to drop that down to 12 12 volts uh, but yeah it, you are right yeah it, it, it is risky doing stuff live especially when you screw up because then everybody sees you screw ups and stuff but you know you know if you accidentally break something I've done that a few times on live channel on live uh, live repairs It's not fun when you screw up live, let's put, let's put it that way. Right, let's fire up the bench power supply. A lot of pressure, yeah. What's the issue? Um, It turns off after about five seconds, mate. It, it's not. This one's not looking promising. I'm just giving it a quick one solver, but I'm going to say it might, it's most likely got an issue with the uh, South Bridge, so. Alright, so we're drawing. No point seven amps. Now that's not normal to draw no point seven amps without being turned on. It should be no point no one. 
We should be only having standby current on this. Something might be getting a little bit warm briefly, maybe. So we've got no fan spin. So I'm just feeling around for hot spots quickly. Don't see any visible signs of liquid damage. <clears throat> uh, yeah, this one don't look promising. This one looks like it's going to be a dead APU. So that's a good start, as always. But it looks like it's going to be a dead APU job. And... If I had to hazard a guess, I would say it's from someone taking it apart and cleaning it and then putting pressure, uneven pressure on when they're putting the clamp back on. Because the console's been cleaned. <coughs> London wouldn't have cleaned this, he would have left it for me. But I see all too often people taking it apart and they put uneven pressure on the APU clamp when they're putting it back together. And it kills it. And that clamp definitely didn't come off normally. Have a feel of the APU. Yeah, so the APU gets warm. But that's it. So I'm still feeling around, just see if I can feel any signs of heat. The only thing getting warm at the moment is the APU. And honestly, I think that's what's causing it. Uh, if it turns on and then turns back off, mate, it's, it's probably something to do with the RAM or something similar. But if it turns on and stays on, but no display, then it could be, could be a, um, it could be a, it could be a, a retimer issue, and it could be um, HDMI issue or a hard drive issue. If it turns on, stays on, but no display. All right, let me check for some voltages. <clears throat> I'm going to say this is probably going to be missing 1.1 volt, 1.3 volt and 3.3. Sorry, 1.1, 1.8 and 3.3. Likely. So let's check for standby voltages. So let's just get a permanent ground. Right, so one point one point eight volt standby. Okay, one point eight is there. Uh, 
Yep, 3.3 is there. On that test point there. Okay. Hmm. I guess I'm wrong. Uh, 1.1. Um, right, okay. So 1.1 is there as well. Um, 3.3 standby. Right, the voltage rails are there. So the safe bridge is fine, because the voltage rails are there. So it's not going to be that voltage regulator. Uh, this one just here, U4C2. Uh, it could be the retimer, maybe. We can't really check the retimer, that's the problem. Um, it's just a case of change it and hope. Um, I can't see any visible signs of anything on this. So, I'm wrong in the fact that all of the... Well, the the, um, the standby voltage is there. We are missing a voltage rail there. I think it's 1.2 volts. Uh. CPU V core is not there. Right, diode mode. Let's just check these MOSFETs. Oh, damn it, my uh. Yeah, my probe went off. Right, we're getting nothing there. We could have a MOSFET issue. Should be getting around 1.9 volts in diode diode mode there. Hmm. Right, that's reading a short, but that always does. Oh. That one's not meant to. Do I use a logic probe adapter? No, I don't now. I don't, mate, no. Um. I'll just check things the old fashioned way. Uh, right, so the voltage rails are there. But these MOSFETs are coming up as short, which is strange. Well, they're coming up as short, but they're not coming up as. they're not, re they're not getting hot. So I don't know. Actually, no. Hang on. Hang on. Well, we're still getting nothing on them MOSFETs. Yeah, I'm a more on that. That was going to come up as short because that was plugged in. Well, that's a normal reading, point nine. And that one, that one, like I said, does come up as short. I think it's a low impedance. Yeah, fifty nine ohms, sixty ohms. Um, yeah, so that one's low impedance. So that one will come up as short. Um, unless I heat up the board and then it'll come up as fine. Uh, but if you notice in beep mode, it doesn't actually beep because it's not short. It's just low impedance because it's um, connected directly to the RAM. Um, so they're fine. Twenty-eight. 
12 volt normal readings normal readings there uh, hmm right I'm gonna check the read timer I'm not I'm not sure why the MOSFETs are coming up as open line the MOSFETs should be reading something but at the same time um, at the same time the the MOSFETs do sometimes do that I don't see any visible signs of anything. So I think this is an APU fault. Just given the fact that we take five seconds to turn off and we don't get any fan spin. I'm I'm gonna say it's probably a fan a, uh, a fault with the APU. But I'll try and replace the retimer anyway. But it's very doubtful it's gonna fix it. But it does sometimes get caused by the retimer. There's just no way to test it though. We have to just hit and hope on that one. I'll try and change the retimer and just see what happens. Nah, it's not. It's not the. Um, it's not going to be the. Uh, what do you call it, mate? The power management I see, or very doubtful. I mean, I can try changing it if the changing the retimer doesn't fix it, but. It's very doubtful it should be that. But even this looks absolutely clean, so... Um, yeah, the voltage rails are there, so... It's very doubtful it's going to be the um, power management, I'd say. I will try if, if, if this doesn't fix it. I can always put this back on. If I need to. But this does cause power issues sometimes. Depends on what's shorted inside the chip, where it's shorted. I don't have any kind of non good diode readings for this, so maybe Jason can get some. Is there a TDP one five eight ended up in there? What the hell? Damn it. I meant to do that anyway. Flux time. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I will. I will check it if this doesn't solve it. But um, I mean, it's just that, like on the um, because all the voltage rails are there, it's generating the voltage in the right places to be able to generate those other voltages on the safe grid. If that makes sense. Um, usually, when usually when we've got a power management issue, um, it generally doesn't. Um, it's generally unrelated to that, um, but you never know. It could, it could be, it could be. It's a good idea. It, it is, it is a possibility. Um, got fan spin now. That could just be because it's hot. Maybe it just didn't want to turn on because. Um, it's not on um, instant on. It's if it's not set to instant on, the fan won't turn on. Weren't the retimer? Nope. That's just because the board's hot, that is. Um, well, I'm going to take my retimer off because they're uh, not exactly cheap. So I'm going to take my retimer off and put the other one back on. Never mind. Yeah, you can tell I weren't expecting to see you, Jason. Hello, by the way. God damn it. Yeah, I will try the NCP 4205 in a minute, but... If it's not that, then it'll be the... Uh, if it's not the 4205, then it'll be APU, which I've suspected from the start. Just clean up this chip. Yeah, the overlays for the socials and stuff, mate, and to to show um, recent um, donations and stuff. Uh, I know I don't need it, but I think it looks nice. So I don't usually have it on the videos. I I recorded in a rush yesterday because I'd come across an issue that I hadn't come across before but other than that I don't generally have it in the videos. Yeah I know uh I know Tyler yeah. Um it's in line though, trust me. It's in line.
Oh, you're on about the cap. Oh, I'll sort that out in a minute. Yeah, I just realised you was on about the cap. Never mind. Uh, yeah, it's just tombstoned. I'll sort it. It's because I had a little hand spasm. <laughs> it's only a cap. I shall sort it out. In a moment. Just cleaning up these pads. But yeah, I just realised you meant the cap. <laughs> hmm. Come on, let me get it with the iron. Damn you. God damn it. I don't think he was being disrespectful. He's, he's entitled to an opinion. Welcome, Shekhar. So one double oh five. Easy. <laughs> Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Yeah, well, there's some one double oh five. Look, hang on. Me them there. How's it going, Modders? Welcome, mate. There you go. Cat. There you go. There's a one double five. <laughs> I think it's a one double five anyway. 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 Whoops. Right. Uh yeah, so I'm going to try replacing the um, power management IC instead then. Uh, I'm not from Brum, mate. I'm from, um, I'm from Willingall. I've never lived in Birmingham. Close, though. Fairly close. But I'm from, I'm from Willingall. Um, I'm working on Xbox One S at the minute, but I'm about to give up on it. Because I've suspected from before I even took it apart that this was going to be an APU issue, and it very much looks that way. Twitter. 
I don't care. I'm not reboarding the IPU, and it's it probably use a damage because the clamp was on in, the clamp was installed in a weird way. And this is the second one of these I've come across today. It looks like someone's put too much pressure on the APU. Which I've seen all too often. we will fix fix Joy-Cons. I don't, mate, unfortunately. Um, for the for the amount of, amount of time it takes with the warranty and um, everything else that I have to give with the repair and with the fact that um, look, well when you couple, couple that with cost of parts and stuff compared to how much it costs to actually buy another one it's better off just buying a brand new one with warranty Still got that video when I read out that name. Uh, what name's that, mate? You know when you you know you've made it when Ben Heck comments. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, oh no, I haven't got 80 plus switches. It's just 80 consoles. But to be honest, they're probably going to be going back because they're a pile of shit, and I've only fixed three out of 13. They're an absolute pile of shit. So they're probably going to be going back, and I'm probably going to refuse to work on them. If I'm being honest. 3 out of 13 is far too low. Why is my camera not coming on? Damn it, why does it keep going into standby every time I turn the camera off for too long? Stop it! Yeah, I know, I, know you, I know you don't charge much for that kind of repair, but that's the problem. In the time that it takes to do that repair, I would have charged 40, 50 pounds for a normal repair. That's the problem. Is the cost that I normally charge for a console repair. Without my coffee, thanks. Thank you very much. I'll be in a sec for it. Well, two minutes. Because this is probably going to go back together and I'm probably going to go and get another one out of the queue. One that I can actually make some friggin' money on because these are a waste of time. Right, let's drop that back down to 12 volts. Well, 12.7 to account for the voltage drop across the cable. Uh, yeah, she's probably gonna go back in. Probably gonna go back as no fix. Damn it! Hmm. I might have just put a bad chip on here. Wait, right, what's going on with this now? It's drawing all kinds of weird currents. Or was it just too hot? Nah, it was just too hot. Yeah, that was drawing all kinds of weird currents. It was bouncing up and down, up and down, up and down. Nah. Um, nah, this is, like, this is a bad APU, this is, guys. As I suspected from all, from the start, all the voltage rails are there. It beeps and beeps on and turns off after five seconds. It's not the power management I see. It's not the, um, it's not anything to do with water damage. Um, and the way that the APU clamp was kind of like 
twisted. That's the only way I can explain it. It was slightly twisted. I think someone's installed the APU clampung and probably damaged the balls underneath. So, yeah. The problem is I can't put my rework machine on there because it ends up popping these. And then I've got to sit there and clean up that mess. So, one thing I don't fix is uh, APU damage on an Xbox One S. Or on an Xbox One in general. And that's what I think is, cause, is the cause of this. There's no liquid damage whatsoever. There's no other signs of any damage. Voltage rails are all present. Has to be APU. Oh well. Not much I can do. <coughs> Not much I can do. Worth a try. Yeah, it's always worth a try. I don't just give up without a fight, but I know deep in my heart of hearts that this is... Well, I'm not going to say guaranteed. I'll never make a guarantee, but I think it's an APU problem. That's my personal opinion, based on experience. If you can't find the issue... If I can't find, if I can't find the issue and there's no visible signs, then the only thing it can really be is Southbridge or... Um, safe for your APU. It's not going to have some random chip on the in the middle of the board die for no reason. So, you know, there has to be a reason. And I'm going to say that someone's opened it up for cleaning. They've took it apart. They've cleaned it all, and then they've put the APU clamp back on one K. Put a bit of extra pressure on the one side, and it's probably cracked a solder board underneath the APU. So, it is what it is. That's my opinion. Is it my shed? Yeah, I am, yeah. Uh, I've got two radiators in here, mate. Um, I've got a radiator by my feet and I've got one behind me as well. So, I'll stay relatively warm. It can get cold, but most of the time it's fairly warm. Plus with the heat of the equipment as well. I mean, this computer, I checked earlier, this computer's been switched on for 16 days. Um, if you look at my task manager, 16 days, 19 hours, 27 minutes, his computer's been on for. It gets pretty toasty in here at times. Ooh, look at those beautiful 12 cores. <laughs> Doesn't even recognise my CPU on the system. <laughs> Yeah, it gets fairly toasty. Right, I'm gonna. I'll put these back together and I'll. Uh, uh, I don't work on PS3s, mate. I don't. I don't work on PS3s at all. I mean, the potting shed. <laughs> It's actually an old pigeon shed. <laughs> Don't worry, it's going to get rebuilt soon. Proper insulation, proper soundproofing, proper lighting. The plan is, you know these studio lights? Oh, I'm building a massive studio light in the roof. Or in the ceiling. I'm building a massive studio light in the ceiling. I've already got all of the light bulb holders, the light bulbs, and the... Um, the light dampness, uh, like the softbox cloth. And I'm basically going to put a load of lights all around the room, evenly spread so as it gets rid of all of the shadows, and I'm going to put a big soft cloth across it. And I'll have one big studio light as my roof. I've already bought all the stuff, it's just finding the time to actually rebuild the shed. And that's the problem. What am I doing? Get the scope first. Yeah, I am, mate. Is it warm? Yeah, it's quite warm, yeah. Uh, it's currently 17 degrees in here. Celsius. Uh, it's currently 17 degrees Celsius in here. Which is ideal for me. It's not cold. It's not hot. 17 Celsius is quite ideal for me.
Price to fix a PS3, I'm guessing you could just buy another one. Pretty much, mate, yeah. It's not just that, though. It's the... It's the fact that I'm... I'm not experienced with them. So I never learnt to fix PS3s. I always learnt... I always learnt... I, I only ever started with PS4s and Xbox Ones and uh, Nintendo Switches, so... Um, should we do an old pair of Nintendo Switch, actually? Cheers, Stephen. I appreciate that, mate. You got a PS3 to work on. Yeah, it's just that I'm not experienced in them, so I mean, realistically, I'm not a general repair technician. I'm a console technician, um, but at the same time, I'm I don't have any desire to learn the PS3s and stuff for the reason that they're not worth any money anymore. So people don't want to pay for the repair. Um, and even for the one odd person that does want to pay for the repair. Um, it's not really worth. It's not really worth learning them, if that makes sense. For that one, for that one random person, every now and again, it's not worth spending the time to, to actually research all of the problems and stuff like that. And if I come across a problem that I don't know, I don't really want to be having to sit there and Google it while I'm in the middle of a repair. Because that just takes twice as long then. See, whereas most of this, it's like with this one here. I saw it turned on for five seconds and I was like, yeah, this ain't, this ain't going to have any visible signs of damage. This ain't going to have any blown components. I was wrong about the voltage rails, granted, but um, most of the time it's going to be the APU. Whereas with a PS3, I wouldn't have a clue. I mean, there's someone from Australia who's sending a PS3 in with a... Um, which needs reballing. That's a sentimental value one. Uh, see, I've told him I'll try a reball, but that is it. Like, if he if he sent it into me for a reball, I'll reball it. But that is literally it. Um, I'm going to reball it, and that's that. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's just one of them things. I'm not going to sit there and diagnose it because I don't know the circuit to diagnose it. Um, but he basically contacted me and he said, look, I just need it reboarding. I've been told it needs reboarding. Can you do it? And he's willing to pay the postage costs and stuff because it's sentimental value. So I've said I'll reboil it, but if it doesn't fix it with a reboil, then I'm not going to sit there and diagnose the circuit. Then it'll just go back as a no fix. And he's well aware of that, so I'm fine with that. But then... For stuff like no power and no display and all of that kind of stuff, I just, I'd rather not. I'd rather not sit there and waste the time learning the circuits on such an old console. I'm, I'm pretty much retro now. I'm pretty much retro these days. And I'm not a retro console technician, so it's one of them things. We have a PS5, but it's pretty much yeah, it pretty much is a PS4 emulator, mate. It's pretty much all it is. I haven't got a PS5 yet. The HDMI ports are available now, though. Um, this is an Xbox One S, mate. This one's an Xbox One S, but this one's not worth fixing, unfortunately. So I'm going to go and grab my cup of coffee and a Nintendo Switch to work on. Uh, that's going to be the plan, I think. It's going to be coffee and Switch. I've got a Nintendo Switch with no power to do. 
And then, after that, I've got... Actually, which one should I do? I've got a PS4, which needs trace repair. And I've got a PS... A, a Nintendo Switch. With no power. Which one should I do, guys and girls? PS4 trace repair, Nintendo Switch, no power. I'll leave it up to you, guys. Yeah, it's expensive. Um, yeah, they're expensive, the PS5 ports on AliExpress. That was £30 the other day. They've friggin' doubled in price. It's ridiculous. It's an absolute joke. They've doubled in price because they're in high demand. How's homeschooling? Um, to be honest, the kids do laptop. The kids do the laptops on... Um, the kids do the schoolwork on the laptop with the teacher um, over a Zoom call, so it's not too bad. We haven't got to sit there and homeschool them ourselves. Everyone's saying PS4, I think. So, the the, uh, the viewers have spoken. It looks like I'm doing the trace repair. I like to leave it up to you guys if I can. What am I doing? That's a, that's a long screw. Oh, dear. Yeah, so it looks like I'm doing the trace repair then. He meant for me, bollocks. Can <laughs> you unlock a PS4 Pro brick for jailbreak? Um, I'm not sure what you mean, mate. What do you mean by brick for jailbreak? If you mean... If you mean it bricked the... Um... If you mean it bricked the Norrun Wild jailbreaking... Uh, yes, but I haven't ever done it. It is possible, but I've never done it myself. Thank you, uh, NJ. I appreciate that, mate. All the kids off school. Uh, no, my youngest son's in school. Um... My youngest son is still in school. That's because he he um he's not he's not special need. He's classed as um I class him as high risk. Uh, not high risk. Uh, what is he? Um, vulnerable. That's it. I class him as vulnerable because he's um he's got speech problems. He can't talk properly. So yeah, the class him as vulnerable. So so he's still in school because he needs the extra help. If that makes sense. Um, he can talk, but he can't put. He, he, he's three, and he can't put sentencing, sentences together. So um, he's classed as vulnerable for that sense. It's it's really weird. I went mental when I found out. I was like, "What the fuck do you mean he's vulnerable? How is he vulnerable?" And then they explained to me, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I'm overreacting a little bit. I get what you mean now." <laughs> but yeah, my youngest son's in school. He's in nursery. Um, but the nurseries have gone back anyway now, I think. There was a lot more people down the school this morning. Um, I've had one person banned and bit by Sony. No. No. No way to unblock, mate. I'm sorry. Um, unfortunately, you need a new console. Once it's banned, it's banned. That's it. It's too late. Uh, I've tried it. Uh, it depends on the issues, mate. Um, I can fix phones, but it depends on the issues. The only things I don't... I do, I do liquid damage and stuff on phones, but I don't do screen repairs or battery replacements. Because it's boring. Um... I just about bring myself to do my own repairs on my own phone. Yeah, it, it will. It will get. Um, it can bloody sing. Yeah, we know. <laughs> if everyone's the same, well, it'll be boring. That's very true. No, um, he's just. He's just. Um, well, Sarah's, Sarah's other two kids was the same. So, 
I mean, I'm not worried. They can both talk now. Um, Cody's got a little bit of a lazy eye as well. He's got uh, Dwayne Syndrome. So, well, he's got Dwayne Syndrome. He's asthmatic. Oh, for fuck's sake. I forgot the frigging bridge. Damn it. Yeah, he's got Dwayne Syndrome. He's asthmatic. Um, and he's got a speech issue. So, the classroom is vulnerable for that. But, I went mental the first time I heard him call him vulnerable. I was like, what the hell are you on about? Don't ever say my son's vulnerable. Because like, I thought he said, I thought they said something about me. Like, I thought that was on about me basically um, abusing my kids and stuff. And I went mad. I went absolutely mental. And trust me, that school know when I'm pissed off. The last time I was pissed off down that school, they had seven teachers shaking. Because of bullying, that was. Because of, the, because of my stepson being bullied in school. Them teachers know when I'm angry. They had seven teachers in the office begging me not to pull my kids out of school. Begging me. I'll let them know how I think. I ain't going to let the school tell me... Tell me what, what I can, can and can't do. Or what the kids can and can't do. Yeah, the school, the school know who the boss is. Let's put it that way. The way I see, I'm the parent and I decide what's best for my kids. Not the school. And that's the way it will always be. Yeah, I hate buddies as well, mate. Yeah, the other two have asthma as well, but Cody's is pretty bad. Um, Cody's asthma is really bad, in fact. Uh, when he was one, um, he kept having asthma attacks. And we phoned an ambulance once because he couldn't breathe and they went mad at us. They was basically like, oh, you... Oh, for God's sake, I've still forgot the metal clip. Yeah, the... we phoned an ambulance and they went mad at us. It was like, you're wasting our time, blah, blah, blah. And the next time it happened, we didn't call him. And it got really bad. And I mean really bad. And then we eventually called him because he was like, no, it ain't right. He cannot breathe. They, f they, they came out and they was like, why haven't you phoned us? And we explained to him. It was like, check your call logs. They went mad at us last time. And they literally told us if we'd have left it 10 more minutes, the poor kid would have been dead. And that was the paramedic's fault for going mad at us. Because if it wasn't for the paramedic, we would have called a lot sooner. But they literally went mad saying we were wasting the time. And then he got diagnosed with asthma at one, which in the UK, being diagnosed with asthma at one, at one year old is basically unheard of. They don't diagnose asthma until you're five, usually. They do not diagnose asthma until you're five, unless it's very severe. Uh, but his oxygen levels was like 70 something percent, which is ridiculous. Oh no, Sarah means... Oh yeah, but they can... Uh, yeah, I can't say that because I'll get demonetized, but yeah. No, I agree with you there, yeah. This was like two years ago, but... I mean... Luckily, since then, he hasn't. we haven't had to call an ambulance for him since then because he's actually been diagnosed with asthma and they actually gave us inhalers um, so he's on the he's on the blue one and the preventer uh, is it Ventolin or something I don't know uh, but they actually diagnosed it and he could get the help he needed for it but what Sarah means is the asthma is from her side of the family like, I don't I haven't got asthma <laughs> no, I haven't forgot anything else mate no. <laughs> yeah the asthma is from um, Sarah's side of the family her dad's got COPD, Sarah's got severe asthma, her other two boys have got asthma. What are your thoughts there? What was you on about? I only just seen that one. Right, well, always put it back how you found it. Epilepsy. The speech. Huh. You have MS. That's pretty. Um, that's pretty rough. I genuinely feel sorry for you there.
Yeah, blue and brown Jaden. Yeah, that's the one, mate. Um, charge reports for my YouTube viewers. I charge forty pound, mate, to replace. Um, it's whether whether you actually have the part or not doesn't affect my prices because I only pay fifty pence for a port anyway. Um, but I, I charge forty pound for the port replacements. Uh, but I only charge. I only. I only actually pay fifty pence for a port. I know that sounds a bit low, but I buy them in bulk, so. Um, I don't actually add co parts cost on to port replacements just because of how cheap they are. Uh, but yeah, I charge forty pound for a port replacement. Any port replacement to YouTube viewers, I charge forty pound, uh, which is a lot a lot cheaper even with postage. It's a lot cheaper than what you're paying most shops. Never understand what he's saying. Bollock you. <laughs> Leave me alone. How's it going, Kadir? Welcome back, buddy. The Discord thing's uh, automatic, mate. It, it's um, it's a chatbot. If you already joined, thank you. Um, to be honest, I haven't been on Discord myself for a while. Um, I've been overwhelmed with comments and stuff. I'm only a tag away though if anyone needs to tag me. One thousand and forty nine playbacks already, that's pretty insane. Uh and another fifty five subscribers in an hour. Good. Right, I'm gonna go and grab another console everyone and I want everyone to do me a huge, huge favour. There's a link about to pop up in the chat. And don't worry, it's a YouTube link. Uh, so, Engineering Scale Models, one of the moderators of the channel, is also a supporter of the channel. He sends me gifts and goodies. Um, he's almost on a thousand subscribers. He does switch repairs and Xbox One repairs. Uh, but he's almost on a thousand subscribers, and I want to get him to a thousand subscribers before the end of the month. He's got eight hundred and fifty-five. He needs a hundred and forty-five. I've just posted a link in chat. Um, and uh, yeah, if we can get him to four, to a thousand subs by the end of the night, so he can use his community channel, uh, so he can use his community page on YouTube, that would be absolutely awesome. He's a good friend of the stream. Um, he helps any helps anyone he can. If you ever have any questions, he's always on Discord. He's always on um, well, not so much on Discord, but he's always on the uh, the chat and the comments, and he helps out when he can. So if you can just subscribe and show him some support, um, then that would be absolutely awesome. And he kills labels as well. So yeah, we have to subscribe just to stop him doing that. <laughs> But yeah, I'll be back in a sec. While I'm gone, please subscribe to Engineering Scar Models.
Hello everyone. Bear with me a sec, just gonna set the camera back up, hang on. I didn't realise that notifications was on for subscriptions, sorry about that. Welcome to all the new subscribers by the way. Uh, right, I'm going to hit refresh on Jason's page. And 865, 10 subscribers, nice. Let's hope we can get him there by Monday. I'm going to give him a shout out in the next video as well and try and get him there. Um, it'd be nice to get him there by the end of the month. Uh, that was his goal was to get a thousand subs by the end of January, so he's very close, but he's not quite there. Um, but yeah, thank you to everyone for subscribing to uh, Jason. How many subs are we on? I was on 800 subs when I um, first started the stream. 68, 68 new subs, that's not bad. And that's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet, almost one a minute. Girl, you said I took drugs within the stream. Yeah. Right. Right, so this has been taken apart. Already, uh, it's a long way to go for you. What do you do on YouTube, mate? Is it the way I do it? Uh, when he gets to a thousand subs, Lee, welcome by the way, mate. Uh, when he gets to a when he gets to a thousand subs, he can monetize the channel, and he can also um, he can monetize the channel. And he can also use his community page. Um, but he basically wants it so he can post these data files and stuff which he's writing for the Nintendo Switch. He doesn't care about the monetization because let's be real, I mean, my channel's got what? Almost 8,000 subs. And he turned £255 this month. That's not a lot. So when you've only got 1,000 subs, you're not going to earn a lot from YouTube. You're not, you're not going to be able to quit your job, let's put it that way. Um... So I mean, it's uh, it's not it's not for the monetization really. Jason's got Jason's got other other methods of earning money. Um, he obviously buys broken stuff, fixes it, and sells it, and then he does freelance work as well, freelance engineering and stuff. So um, it's not for the money for Jason. It's for it's purely for the fact that he can use the community tab. Um, that's all he wants it for. I don't think he cares about the monetization, but um, or at least not at the mo not at the moment, at least. Boy, right, so this console's come from a viewer, and he's already taken it apart. Uh, so basically, the the backstory for this is a friend of his sent it to him and said oh is there any chance you can try and do a HDMI repair and he's attempted it and torn a couple of traces um, so but before we tore the traces the, the friend apparently cut the port so yeah we've only got three torn traces it's not it's not bad Can you give any tax? Uh, what do you mean, mate? Do you mean do you have to pay tax? Because um, yes, you do. Yeah, it's still an income. Yeah, just a gaming video. So oh, okay. Yeah, the way I do it, um, or the way I'm doing it, because I've had so much help from the community, like Steve and um, Steve and 
Vince are the two notable names of who um yeah, a friend, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now he said he, he has admitted that he was the one who taught the traces, but you know. It is what it is. Um yeah, so the way I do it is basically if someone's got a channel and I think their content's useful, then I'll try and help them get to a thousand subscribers. Because a, th a thousand is a huge milestone for anyone. I remember when I first got a thousand subscribers and I was literally going around to everyone, I've got a thousand subscribers, I've got a thousand subscribers. It's huge. A thousand subs, a hundred and a thousand are literally, you know, they are the big milestones. Um, well, hundred thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, twenty-five thousand, hundred thousand and a million. That's the big milestones. Uh, that's what everyone ultimately go, goes for. That's the goals. Um, so I basically say to people, look, I'll, 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 I'll try and get you to a thousand. Um, we helped Stez to just push over a thousand. Stez was very close. He was like 30 summit off. Uh, Stez sticks fix, by the way. Uh, he's in the chat if you want to find his channel. So basically, now I'm helping Jason get to a thousand. And then once Jason's at a thousand, I want to try and get Micro Mad Repair to a thousand. Um, Micro Mad Repair is on nearly two hundred, I think. Um, Jason's on eight hundred and sixty-six now. Micro Mad Repair is on one hundred ninety-eight, so he's close to two hundred. And Stez is on one thousand two hundred and twenty something, so. It says 1.22k. So I got, I helped, uh, well, Vince helped Stairs get from like 100 to 950, and then I pushed it that last little bit on one of the live streams. Um, that's me. Hello. <laughs> you want 1 million by tomorrow? <laughs> you know what? I really want that silver plaque for the 100,000. I really do. I'm hoping I'm there by the end of next year. Um, at the rate, my channel is growing at the minute. Um,. I should be there. So I'm... Hang on, let me check my... Um, at the moment, it says it's going to be 80 days before I get to it to 10,000. We all know that's going to happen before then. Um, it still says I'm on 7.71 thousand. But it says I've gained 160 on... Let me show you. He says I gained 160 on Monday, 340 on Tuesday, 350 on Wednesday, 400 on Thursday, and then 240 today. But bear in mind there's another 100 and something that's got to go on there. So that's at least 350 for today. So by the look of it, it's going up every day. So like 160, 340, 350, 400. And then today's going to be very close to 400. It's got to be. Very close to 400, but that's not updated for a while. That's not updated for a couple of hours now. Um, but according to according to my statistics, I'm on 7,869. 7869, so memes. <laughs> but yeah, um, we finally hit a million watch hours, uh, watch minutes today. Uh, it says watch hours there, but it's, it's a million watch hours, um, which is absolutely insane. I can't believe how much that is. Uh, if you look at the ranking of my last two videos, my last video was the Tronic Fix video is doing the best at two and a half thousand after twenty four hours, uh, twenty seven hours, and then this one is on two thousand. Uh, but the Tronic Fix video now is well over twenty k. 22,000 views, it's insane. So, yeah, absolutely awesome. Yeah, Tronic Fix is planning on um, mentioning me in a, in a video, yeah. How's it going, uh, Judy? Uh, Judy, uh, crazy, welcome. Uh, Lyoko, thank you, mate. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I think I've said hello to everyone else. Yeah, welcome to everyone. Oh, shoot. Sorry, I'll turn my microphone down. Yeah, so this was sent in by a viewer. Uh, he lives local, so he came and dropped it off today. I said I'd do it on stream. Uh, it's got a bit of trace damage, so I'm going to try and sort it out. I'm going to pop under the scope. T 
2 million nil I'll say versus me. <laughs> Alright, so we've got a bit of damage there. A little bit of damage. But, uh, yeah, we're going to see what we can do about repairing these chases. Right, I'll stop that wobble. There we go. Just lock that in place. Uh, but first of all, I need to clean up the the mess on the ground holes. So I need to clean up the ground holes first. And then I can drop a port on. Uh, I'm just going to turn my soldering iron on. Yeah, you can type in exclamation point ESM for um, engineering scale models channel link if you're on live chat. If you're watching this after the after the live, then it won't work. But uh, yeah, I wanted to give I wanted to give Jason a shout out in the video. It would have really boosted his channel, but I didn't really feel like it would have been well. I felt like it would have been disrespectful to Steve if I'd have done that. So I'll put, I'll put a link in the iCard on the Tronic Fix video, but I didn't do anything more than that. Um, same as I didn't, I didn't do a sponsor spot on there. I could have got, I could have got a sponsor spot for that video, and I didn't, um, because it would have been disrespectful for, for, to Steve. Um, so I just chose not to. Right, um, where's my solder gone? Subscribe to Jason. Thanks, mate. I appreciate that. Do you have to repair the ground pads? Um, not really. Some of them you do. Uh, you need some ground pads. Uh, I mean, pin number 14. Like, pin number 19 is on the left-hand side on these. So, um, yeah, pin number 14 I'm not concerned about because that's uh, a no connect. But um, yeah, most of the ground pads, you need a few ground pads, but not many. Oh, there's something stuck in there. Let me get some flux on there. Hmm, I'm not comfortable with how those ground legs look. They don't look great. Almost 8k, yeah, very close, mate. Yeah, it should be there by tomorrow, I'd say. I can't believe how much it's grown. It's the way that I did the video. Um, so basically, the way I did the video, the way I did the... Um, I'll try and show you in a sec, actually. Uh, I've been working out the YouTube algorithm lately. A little bit and I've been kind of not exploiting it but I've, I have in a way been exploiting it for my benefit for my own benefit um, so the way the YouTube algorithm works basically it will it'll determine what the user what it thinks the user should what user should watch based on what they're watching at that time what they've recently watched and what they've watched in the past uh, like over long term so that's why you'll notice that sometimes you'll get like recommendations for videos that are like five years old because it thinks that you, it thinks that you might be interested in it, and occasionally, occasionally the algorithm will push an old video to try and try and bump it back up in the rankings and keep the views going. Um, so basically, it determines that it determines what the video is about based on things like the title, the description, the video tags, the thumbnail, and believe it or not. YouTube can recognise faces, so by having Steve's picture in there, which he did give me permission to do, by the way, I spoke to him in email and he gave me permission for everything I did. 
Um, he said basically no hold board. If you, if whatever you can do to get to push the video. Um, so basically, the way I did it was I put his picture in the thumbnail. I put his username or his YouTube name in the tags. I put his YouTube name in the title and his YouTube name and links in the description. And by doing that, YouTube determined that it was a video that Steve's viewers will want to watch. So I kind of exploited the algorithm, but I also used Steve's status on YouTube to my advantage, uh, which I had permission to do. So I wasn't doing anything wrong. Uh, so now, whenever someone's watching a video from Steve, or whenever someone is searching for Steve, they'll get my, they'll get me in the recommendations. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons I've had a big boost on the channel. Struggling with that one. Tooting your horn. Pretty much, mate, yeah. No, it is true. It's, um, the algorithm is... It's a real thing. Oh, wow. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Look at the size of that hole. I can see every layer. I don't think this is going to be fixable. I don't think this is going to be fixable. I can see every layer through there. Yeah, it comes up for everyone, mate. Anyone who's searching for Steve. Anyone who's searching for Steve, it'll come up. Which is great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it is kind of exploiting his name a little bit, but he gave me permission, so... It's not like I did anything wrong. Um, yeah, Steve's great. Steve's a really nice, genuine person. He has a, he has a second channel, by the way. If anyone's wondering, he does have a second channel, Stephen Porter. He's kind of a vlogging channel more than anything. Very optimistic about this, by the way. I don't think I'll be able to fix it. I can see straight through the board. There's a big hole there, and it's, if that's hit any other layer that's not ground, then it's gone. There is usually a safe zone for that, but hmm, yeah, it doesn't look good. It don't look good at all. Right, where's my jumper wire? Uh, can hear the air raid siren when the screwdriver comes out. <laughs> 
Or is it big holes? I don't know, mate. I really don't. In the words of Shaggy, it wasn't me. Mm, it wasn't me, mate. I didn't do it. If I did, prove it. <laughs> Plot twist, I did this deliberately to troll myself on stream. <laughs> okay, so there's pin number sixteen. I'm not bothered about pin fourteen, that's a no connect. And um, pin number six goes to this AMI filter just here. Yeah, one of them I'll connect, yeah. Craig, did you email them? To, did you email me to ask me for them, mate? I honestly can't remember if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, thank you, Jose. I appreciate that, mate. How come you can't get Lady Solder? Because it's not meant to be used, mate. It's not meant to be used. Never said hi. I did. I said hello to you, mate. I'll guarantee that. I never miss an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did say hello to you, mate, but hello anyway. We can in the States. Yeah, we can't here. You're not meant to use Lady Solder. Because of the toxins. Uh, right. I'm going to restore this trace permanently. And that one as well. Thank you, Retro. I appreciate that, mate. Yeah, eBay's always going to be cheaper because of the price of Amazon. The price of Amazon charges. eBay will always be cheaper. The only good thing about Amazon is it's quicker delivery on most items. If it's shipped by Amazon, it's quicker delivery. Alright, so I'm doing very fine trace work and I'm going to use an excessively oversized tip. Just to troll myself, and I can't be because I can't be bothered to change the tip. I'll just use a tip the size of four pins. Why not? Excessively oversized.
Uh, it depends on the um, it depends on the damage that you've got there, mate. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not, depending on if you know where the traces go to as well. Um, most of the time, trace repair comes down to confidence. A lot of the time, it comes down to confidence. Like, but you'll you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed what you can do if you put your mind to it. Let's put it that way. Alright, let's create a fish hook there. There you go. Do some fancy fancy trace repair, and let's make this a permanent fix. So basically, the way I want to do this is so if the port needs to be lifted off again, which let's face it, it's a PlayStation Four, so it probably will be. It probably will be broke again in the future, but. If the port needs to be lifted off again, it's going to be much easier to do it without having to perform trace repair again by doing it like this. Okey doke. Alright, so I just need to find my conformal coating. There it is. Alright, so I'm going to put some conformal coating over it. Uh, it's far too much, but never mind. I'm basically going to glue this trace back into place. There we go. Now I'm going to use my UV light, so if anyone's got suffering with epilepsy, please look away now for a couple of minutes until I say it's safe to look. But all I'm doing is just putting the UV light over the mask just to cure it because this mask cures with UV. Well, actually, this is a 405 nanometer wavelength laser, it's not a UV light. It's the wavelength what the solder mask will cure on, not the uh, not the actual UV itself. <clears throat> How's it going, Frosty? Right, that's almost cured. I'm just checking that it's hard and okay. And it appears to have done. So I'm going to give it a couple more seconds. And I'm just going to press down on it with the tweezers just to make sure that there's no excess underneath because if there's excess solder mask underneath that's not cured then this this solder mask is just basically going to slide out the way as soon as I use any kind of heat so we want to make sure it's all cured underneath as well <laughs> there we go Okay, safe to look now if you're epileptic. And as you'll see now, 
because there's solder mask there and we've basically glued that trace back in that's not going to go nowhere so now I can solder to that without it falling off how's it going Gordon good to see you buddy had your mask come yesterday nice October Jesus I just bought it on eBay mate if I'm honest Right, so next I want to do this trace here. So this is a data line. Pin number six is a data line that goes to the EMI filters. Um, actually, first of all, I'm going to check for continuity between pin number 16 and where it's meant to go on the board. So I'm going to put my multimeter into continuity mode. So that's the mode that's going to beep. When we complete the circuit, whoops. And if we zoom out, we can pop one probe on the trace itself. And there we go. So that goes to this little component here. I'm not 100% sure what that component is, but that's where pin number 16 goes. So that's got continuity there, which means that we've restored that circuit or we've restored that trace. So that one's done. So now all we need to do is do the same thing for pin number six. So, I'm going to add a bit of flux. And I'm going to make sure I've got a nice clean iron. Some fresh solder on it. go so let me just clean that up Thank you, Trio. I appreciate that, mate. Uh, I live in uh, Willingall in the, in the West Midlands, mate. <laughs> yeah, someone's masked it, mate, yeah. Definitely. That's what we're here to fix. Or oh, hopefully fix, anyway. I'm not keen on uh, the fact that there's a big fat hole in there and I can see every single layer. That's one thing I'm not keen on. Uh, it doesn't look promising with that hole there, but I'll, I'll give it a try at least. I'll at least restore the traces and give it a try. It doesn't take long to restore a couple of traces. Right, so let's try and... Let's try and follow the original path the best, play, best way we can. There we go. 
You're working well and all. No, it's a small world, mate. Where, where, where do you work, mate? Alright, so let's... Uh... Let's do that. Uh, Wolverhampton, will you know, mate? Midland Shield. Oh, I know we. Um, Stringy Lane. I used to live in Slater Street. My kids go to Barcroft. <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, the Wolverhampton, will you know, not the Coventry one. I oh, know there's two. A lot of people get that mixed up. Oh, come on, shaping the way. Oh, you know what stuff you will just glue it down first. There's that. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to glue the top of this one as well. That's the one, yeah. Um, you know, um, Belfort Gaming just around the corner from you. <laughs> I used to do handbrake turns on there. <laughs> I used to do handbrake turns on Belfort Gaming. Quite fun. Just sit there faffing around in my shitty little Peugeot 106. <laughs> Wondering if you know me. Uh, if you're local, you, you might do. Quite a few people know me, to be honest. Not saying I'm famous or anything, like, I'm, just, I'm just very well known. Right, uh, that said though, if you work on Midland Chilled, I'm happy to take a load of free milk and give you a sp free free milk meat and give you a sponsorship on the channel. <laughs> My missus would love me to do that. <laughs> no, I'm joking, but yeah, no, nah, it's very very close to me. Yeah, uh, right, bear with me a second. I'm going to use the UV again. Don't you make like poison stuff in there? I'm pretty sure you do. Velvet Tomcat, nice. My sister likes Rovers. I don't know why. Um, that's a good question actually, Toby. Um, by doing it this way, basically by putting the jumper there first, it's number one. It saves me from melting the port while I'm installing it. Um, and number two is basically this is a permanent fix so once this is cured um, once this is fixed in place basically this is going nowhere so rather than soldering it directly to the pin itself if it's underneath the pin then when you use hot air to remove a port in the future it's going to remove it from this jumper wire as well um, meaning that you can just drop another port straight on and or usually you can just drop a, drop a port straight on and actually repair the port in the future if it needs it which it probably will because it's a PS4 and they always do uh, so this is a more permanent solution good little cars the one I was seeking I remember my first one I was seeking I had a woman hit me head on ripped me off I was wounded, I love that car. Oh shoot, wrong one, hang on. Why have, I, why have I switched scenes? I wanted to plug my light back in, not switch scenes. Sorry guys. Uh, I'm not on bad caps, mate, no. No, I'm not on bad caps, mate. Um, 
they worry about the added height. Nah, it's fine. It's um, it's it's never generally a problem. Um, you've always got a little bit of legway, a little bit of leg room to work with. But it's never usually an issue. I've never come across an issue with it. I just prefer it to do it. I just prefer to do it this way if there's only one or two. If there's like ten or eleven, then I'm like, nah, stuff it. I ain't sitting there spending all that extra time on it. But when it's just one or two, I like to try and do a much cleaner and much more permanent fix for it. You don't have to do it like this, obviously. I'll just that's just the way I do it. Poison patties, yeah. I didn't know about the Scotch, uh, Scotch egg or pork pie factories. Didn't know about them. Learn something new every day. I've lived in Willing all about ten years, I think, something like that. Maybe a little bit longer. Um, actually, yeah, it is longer. It's more like fourteen. Jesus, I'm old. <laughs> Right, uh, oh, I'm going to cure this bit at the top. Hungry all of a sudden. <laughs> well, when you order, send me some upstairs. I'm sure the missus will have Chinese. Yeah, you could technically squash these jumper wires as well, um, Toby. The ones that I use, because I use it out of, um, I use jumper wire out of, well, it's not jumper wire, it's motor wire out of a microwave. I've got literally a lifetime supply for probably the entire of my viewer base that's watching this live stream now. Um, literally. Uh, basically, because it's nice and thick, I could technically squash this. I could get some tweezers and squash it and make it flat and actually make it into a pad. Uh, I don't do that, but I could, uh, just because of how thick it is compared to normal jumper wire. But I could flatten it down if I wanted to. I have got all sorts of different sizes. I've got like 0.6mm, 0.8mm, 1mm, and then whatever the hell this one is. Ah, shoot, I've just... Well, didn't work for that one, did it? Ah, that's why I look, look, it's squashing itself. I'm not worried about that anyway, stuff it. Yeah, but if I wanted to, like let's say for example, if I wanted to make it flatter to the board, I could squash it down. In fact, I do that sometimes on Switch Trace repairs, like Nintendo Switch repairs. But yeah, this is more of a permanent solution. That's the only reason I do it like this. It's just personal preference. Basically, that's flatter now, so that's pretty much in line with the rest of the pads. I'll just give that a clean. I just like to spend a bit of extra time on them sometimes. It's quite relaxing, if I'm being honest. When you ain't got like 10 to do, it's not too bad. Yeah, she does, mate, yeah. Um, she's, she does still sell it. She's going to be selling the 0.6mm stuff as well. She's going to start re reading that up and selling it. She doesn't actually make anything off it. It's just something for her to do. She doesn't make any profit off it. By the time we've paid for the spools and everything else, she doesn't make anything off it. Right. Let's find a port. I might have to go in the house and get one. Don't know if I'll go in here. Yet. Might have to go in the house and get a port. Oh, never mind. I got one. Well, I've got some like that. Yeah, no worries, uh, Trio. Uh, 
How do we learn how to find faults? Um, ask questions, mate. Ask other people. We all we all try and we all try and help ourselves. Uh, we all try and help each other. It's a nice community we've got. All right, let's see if this port's going to go in. I might struggle. Hmm. I'm going to struggle to get this port in here. Right, let me switch to the main cam. Hang on. Probably got to... Yeah, I've got to log back into my frigging phone now. Alright, bear with me a sec. I've got to put my frigging password back in because he keeps locking the screen. I don't know why. Damn it, he's done it a frigging again. Stop locking my frigging screen. Sorry about the shakiness, guys. It's ever since the Joy Cam update, that is. Ever since the update. See? Updates are just made to break your phone or break your device. Yeah, I'm going to struggle to get this port in. Well, for a start, there's still a frigging piece that's stuck. They should be cleaning off now. There we go. Are you kidding me? I've got a big hole in my port. Well, in the ground legs. And I've still got to bend the port to make it fit. Seriously. Oh, dearie me. Right. These cheap AliExpress ports come with a little bit of a downside. The upside is they cost about 30 pence each. And the downside is we have to bend and shape them. To make them fit, we have to bend the legs slightly. There we go. Right, let me just uh, swap ports or swap. Um, tips rather I just need to get a better tip on for this part definitely can't use that monster tip for this bit
Right. Right, so for now the main thing I want to do is just get this to basically be in line. What's going on with my soldering iron? Why is it turned off? Damn it. Oh, for God's sake. Oh dear, I think what's all the United wants to play up. Don't turn off. What's going on? Okay, something's not right when what's all the United is playing up. Cheers, Matthew. I appreciate that, mate. I'm not sure why, but thanks anyway. Right, let me find some wick so I can clean up these pins. Right, bear with me a sec. Ow, I just burnt my finger again. Ow, that hurt. Damn, that hurt. Right, so that's slightly out of line. Shouldn't be too much of an issue though, it's very slightly out. Right, let me just clean that up and I'll have a look at it. <coughs> Thank you. 
Okay. Yeah, sometimes trying to find shorts, is, it can be a rabbit hole, to be honest. Sometimes it can be a rabbit hole. Even for an experienced technician, it can be a pain in the butt sometimes, trying to figure out where the short is. Sometimes you only get an active short as well, where it's only short when the device is turned on. There is such thing as an active short. <coughs> So we've got a little bit of melted, but nowhere near what we would have had if we'd have um, run them traces after after the fact. No, Andy's not from Willingall. Uh, you, you're not from Willingall, are you, Andy? Oh, you're from Norton Keynes? Oh, okay. Didn't think he was that close, mate. Stalker. <laughs> Right, let me just give these a nudge test. Andy, are you related to Matty and Sean? Right, well that trace is loose. Sixteen's gonna be loose, but it should be connected. Why have we got nothing on pin eighteen? Why is that not connected? Watch my back. <laughs> Pin number 13 appears to be loose. I'll check it with the multimeter in a minute. I think that's it. I think that's done. Pin number six is going to read as loose. Or show as loose, rather. Same as 16. 13 seems a bit loose, so I will test it. Right. If we zoom out. Let's just test 
all of these pins now. So I'm going to grab the multimeter again. Uh, pin, pins 1 through 12 are all on the back of the board. So without sitting there scraping through the board, I'm not uh, scraping through the solder mask. I'm not going to be able to check them. So them ones all seem fine anyway, apart from pin number 6. Which... Pin number six is good. I'll put some more solder mask on that to protect it from pin number five. Uh, right, so pin number 19. So this end pin. So when I say pin number 19, I mean this one here. So pin number 19 should go there, that's good, pin number 18, good, pin number 17 is ground, pin number 16 goes there, pin number 15 goes here, good. Pin number 14 is now connect, and pin number 13 goes there. So yeah, pin number 13 is a loose trace as well. And then 12 onwards are all data lines on the other side of the board. So, um, yeah, that's all good. All of that's good. Uh, while I'm still on this side of the board, actually, let's check. Let's make sure this fuse is good. So, TH2001 is a resettable fuse. That's good. Uh, let's check the diodes. So, let's have a look. Whoops. 0.552, that's good. And... 0.641, that's good. Point five five two. Point five six nine. Point five five four. So all the diodes are testing good. Every component on that side of the board is testing fine. Uh, so that's a good thing. So the rest of the circuit seems fine. How can I know where the pins go? I'm used to it, mate. Um, I've been, I've worked on that many trace repair jobs. Um, I'm just kind of used to it now, to be honest. You do get used to them eventually. Yeah, I kind of memorised them just because I, I do them. I do them all the time. How's it going, Kaiser? Right, yo. Bit of flux. Right, let's try and fill this full of solder. It's going to be difficult considering how big the holes have been made. Come on, get the ground point, there we go. Come on.
I don't care about a bridge there. If it has to be bridged, it has to be bridged. Uh, it's all ground anyway, so... I will try and make it look neat. Get off. I'm basically just trying to fill the holes as best I can. Um, yeah, I could... I could put some wire inside it, but I'd rather not. I'd rather just fill it with solder, if I can help it. But yeah, you could do that, yeah. There is an option. These ones shouldn't be too bad. How's it going, Ryan? More flux, yeah. These ones won't be too bad, this side. Just need somewhere to bite onto so as it doesn't end up snapping. There you go. What's the wattage? I don't know actually, mate, to be honest. Um, engineering, are you still in the chat, mate? Maybe engineering knows. Um, I can find out shortly, though. It's fairly high-powered for a small iron. But I don't know the watts, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I'm good, thanks, mate. Right, well, my frigging phone seems to want to go off again. I've got to sort that out. What's going on with this? It should be keeping the screen on. Bear with me. Right, I'm going to try and change the settings quickly. Um, so I'll leave it on this screen for a sec. Um, power and screen. Keep screens on. Ugh, it's already on. Stupid ass. Hmm. Well, I don't know what's going on with it. Don't know what's going on with it. Somewhere like that, mate. Yeah, about 65 watts, roughly. Right, so that looks pretty good, um, port's nice and secure, everything else checks out fine, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get it tested shall we, what do you guys think, do you think it's going to work, or do you think I've just wasted my time? I'm not so sure with how big them holes are, to be honest. I'm not so sure. I'm not as confident on this one as I would be normally. Let's put it that way. Okay, dog. Let me just grab the... Uh, the chassis. Check the alignment. Perfect. Bloody pessimists. <laughs> It'll work. I don't know, mate. It's got some damage on that board. I'm not so sure, to be honest. I'm, I'm really not that confident in this one. Uh, I mean, I've done a good job on the traces, but, you know.
Let's have a look. Oh, screws falling out everywhere. That's annoying. Was it dropped? No, I think the port was damaged and the original owner cut the port out. Um, apparently the original owner, according to what I've been told, the original owner cut the port out. Um, and then he gave it to his mate. His mate tried to fix it, pulled the traces. Um, and then it ended up, ended up in my hands. So... Yeah, you me, I suppose. <laughs> oh, look, they even provided a port. Ha! <laughs> well, that's mine now. You ain't having that back. <laughs> I've used a port, ain't I? Same thing, tomato, tomato. You say tomato, I say shut up your posh git. Right. Let me get the uh, power supply. So I'm not going to be reassembling this tonight because I want to crack on with repairs, to be honest. Um, the, cu the customer's not 100% sure what works and what don't on it. He just wanted the HDMI port doing, so... I'm not going to sit here and reassemble it tonight. I'll reassemble it another time. Um, I just want to I just want to see display on the screen because that's, that's all I'm be I've been asked to do. He's just fix the HDMI port. I will assemble it, but just not tonight. I've just dropped my screwdriver as well. Lovely. But yeah, it it needs a full. He needs full reassembly, so I'll do it tomorrow morning. I just want to see it working, basically. Uh, power supply, power supply, power supply. Where's my freaking power supply? There it is. Yeah, I just want to see it working, basically. But, I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Hmm, no signal. No signal. That's blue light of death. I think. I think that's blue light of death. As well as um as well as the HDMI. That's gonna be annoying if that's a blue light of death. I'm gonna be honest. It's gonna be pretty annoying if that's blue light of death. And I've got a feeling it is. That's not safe mode, mate. That's uh, that's blue light of death, hundred percent. I'm going to try and turn this onto into safe mode now. I'm going to hold the power button down. It's going to turn itself back off. That's blue light of death. It probably is dropped. It's not Southbridge. It's definitely not Southbridge. It's APU. 
If it was Southbridge, it would be six second blood. It's definitely not the Southbridge. Uh, Southbridge is always six seconds, then it turns off. Um, lung pulsing blood. Could be anything. Yep, that's just shut itself down. That's blue light of death. IPU blue light of death. But yeah, um, safe bridge is always um, safe bridge is always going to be um, six seconds and off. Everything checks out properly. Yeah, um, now the issues was the screwdriver I'm using. I'll just grab the nearest Phillips screwdriver. Um, it's just because I'm only using a small Phillips bit. Um, but that's. I reckon that's probably been dropped. Uh, I haven't got any washers, so I can do a test on it. I'll double clamp it. I'm going to double clamp it. I'm going to be clear here as well. I'm not doing this to fix it. I'm not doing this to fix it. This is just a test. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, mate. Yeah, just double clamping it, yeah. Why does he block that message? That's weird. Um, exclamation point uptime. Yeah, that's going to be shorts underneath the. Uh, that's going to be shorts on the IP. Um, shorts on the HDMI circuit. That is. It's not going to be anything to do with the HDMI with the uh, IPU. Um, yeah, that's going to be shorts on the um, layers in the board for sure. Yeah, that's not the IPU for sure. Definitely isn't. Yeah, that's gone. That's short. That's internal board shorts. That is. Um, 
I'm not going to sit there and reflow that or anything or reboard it. It's not worth it. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, I'm not going to waste any more time on that. It's warm, yeah. Um, that's definitely going to be blue light of death caused by internal board shorts. But, yeah, I'm not going to waste any more time on that. It's not worth it. It's too much damage. I'd have to sit there and peel back all the layers. And I'm definitely not doing that. Kick it into touch. <laughs> I did say I don't have any high hopes for this board. Yeah, never mind. I'm going to grab the Nintendo Switch in a sec. I'll do that one. That one should be a fixable device. Do I have a flirt? Yes, I do, mate. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where it is at the minute, but I do have one. I agree, yeah, when you when you first go into BGA rework, um, use damaged boards. Uh, I would never recommend practice on a working board, for sure. Oh well, that sucks, but uh, I'm not going to waste any more time on it. I can't. I can't. Ooh, who here thinks we're going to get past uh, 8,000 subs by the end of the night? We're on 7,910. That'd be sick. Bin, yeah. Right, I'll be back in a moment. Uh, I'm going to go grab a coffee and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that Nintendo Switch. Um, I do want everyone to do me a favour. I know I mentioned it earlier, but there's going to be new viewers. Uh... If you're not already, we're trying to get um, we're trying to get we're trying to get Jason to eight thousand to a thousand subs. Uh, he's currently on eight hundred and sixty nine. I'm going to type his link in the chat, and um, the flare is a thermal camera, Katrina. Welcome, by the way. Uh, yeah. So if you if you can subscribe to Engineering Scale Models. And getting to a thousand subs before Monday, that'd be awesome. Um, Psychonics, that's what I started doing repairs with, mate. I started on controllers and then just worked my way up from there. Keep going, mate, and you'll uh, you'll build yourself up from that. Oh yeah, and leave a like on the video as well on the stream. <laughs> What airflow and temp should you use? Um, it depends on the machine. It's hard to say, but it depends on the machine because it. it um, I mean, all machines are different. Personally, I use um, to remove the port. I use no nozzle, fifty percent airflow, four hundred eighty degrees Celsius. To put it back on, I put. I use to put it back on when I'm using leaded solder. I use four hundred twenty degrees Celsius. No nozzle, thirty percent airflow, uh, but that's with the Atten ST eight sixty two D. Right, I'll be back in a second, ladies and gents.
Right. Bear with me a sec. I just need to get. Just need to get some work, some room. So I'm going to zoom in for this one because I want to try and get this into a video if I can. Uh, and basically, while I'm doing this repair, because this one's probably going to be a successful repair, or at least it damn well frigging better be because I've had a shit day on repairs. Um, but basically. I want to try and make this one into a video because I want to give I want to put a shout out at the start of the video on this one for Jason because then I can get this video uploaded tomorrow and then hopefully by the time well by tomorrow night it should have like what a thousand views and give his channel the boost it needs to get to a thousand subscribers before Monday so yeah, basically, I want to give him a shout out if I can and try and get him. Ah, my hand's stinging. <laughs> yeah, I want to try and give him a shout out in a video if I can. That's why I want to work on this Nintendo Switch tonight. Fingers crossed. Uh, right, let me catch up on chat quickly. Um, all you gotta do, mate, is uh, well, just practice, basically. Um, just practice. You'll get you'll get used to it. If you've done restorations, you'll you'll get used to it. Just put it in the dishwasher. I'll have to try that, mate. I'll have to try that. Because these are virtually impossible to friggin' clean. They really are. Cleaning up for the new guests. <laughs> no, I just want to... Um... Well, I'll clean up after every job anyway, but... Um, yeah, I just want to basically... I want to do this in a, in a video. Like, basically, when I'm doing it in... Basically, when I'm doing it as a video, or when I want to do it as a video, I don't ignore chat, but I, I basically don't respond to chat until certain points. So basically, like, I'll respond to chat every, like, five minutes or so. Um, but only when I'm not doing something, when I'm when I'm on a downtime sort of thing, waiting for soldier irons to heat up and uh, and stuff like that. Uh, I'll still explain what I'm doing, but obviously I do it so as it makes it easier to edit the video. Because if I'm talking halfway through, then I've got to have that talking in the video, so it makes it kind of complicated. It makes it harder for people to follow as well. Uh, you know, to follow along with the video. If I'm trying to use the video to fix their own console, um, but yeah, do uh, do 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 do. Right, well, I'm going to keep my hand there so it focuses on my hand. I think. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's just do it there. It'll focus on that then. Right, so this Nintendo Switch has been sent in because it originally went in for a USB-C port replacement and after the port replacement it still has no power. So this has been sent down from London so we can take a look at it. And the first thing I want to do is I want to plug in a USB amp meter so I can figure out what's actually going on with it. 
So I'm going to grab a USB. Plug it in. And let's see what kind of current it's drawing, shall we? Okay, so it's recognised the USB. And we get 0 0.42 amps. Which would appear to be a normal current draw. However, this is another one of those. However, this is one another one of those pattern recognition things where it's drawing 0 0.40, 0, 0, 0 0.4 to 0 0.45 amps, uh, which appears to be slow charge. But in actual fact, it's probably got an issue with P13 USB, which is a common knock-on effect of having a damaged port because P13 USB is directly linked to the USB-C port. Uh, P13 USB is the HDMI IC for the Nintendo Switch and it controls video output so it controls stuff like docking and some of the USB-C circuit as well. So let's take it apart, see what we can do with it and see if we can get this thing working again. Now the one problem with having a short on the P13 USB would be that sometimes it can cause an issue where it will basically short out the CPU. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it apart, I'm going to run some tests and then I'll see where the short is. If there's a short on P13 I'll remove the chip and if there's a short after I've removed P13 then it will be a no fix because then it'll have a two. that will basically be a short on the CPU. Let's hope that's not the case. Let's hope it's just a case of it's a bad chip. But we do have current draw, which means the USB-C circuit is working. But there's an issue somewhere along the line. So, no game card. No SD card. Good. There was one screw missing, so that is duly noted. Let's get the back plate off. There we go. Okay, let's give it a quick visual inspection. Let's see if we can see any anything out of the ordinary. I don't think this has had a replacement USB. I think it got booked in for a USB and it's probably not had a USB p a new USB port. It looks that way. So let's get the board out. certainly looks like it hasn't had a port but that said the way that London installs the ports is to use a BGA rework station they basically heat up the board pull the port off and drop a brand new one straight on without any kind of change of the solder and things like that they generally have an 100% success rate of it but it's one of them things where I can't really tell when they've changed the port sometimes um, but I can't see any flux on the board and he doesn't usually clean up the flux he uses no clean flux and he doesn't generally clean it up or not very well at least from what I've seen 
whether he has on this one, I don't know, but we'll see. Okay, so this port hasn't been replaced. And the reason I know that is because this heatsink has never been taken off. Damn it. We ripped it. Never mind. Right. Okay. That's fine. Try and get it off without ripping that phone, but it's not always possible. But that heatsink's never been off, which means that the board's never been out. Okay, so the port itself has never been changed, so I'm going to inspect the port under the microscope and see what the situation is with that, see if we've got any damage there. And I'm not a hundred percent sure, but we might have some liquid damage here. Right, we do have damage to the port. It's very hard to see, but there is damage there. So let me just try and show you. So just here, there's two pins in the middle that are sticking up. So there's pins in the middle sticking up, and also. Around the edge, it looks like there's, it's hard to tell, but it's, it's either a little bit of liquid damage, not a lot, but a liquid, little bit of liquid damage, or corrosion, uh, or dust, sorry. Yeah, I think it might be dust, actually. It might not be liquid damage. So that side seems fine. That side seems nice and flat. But this side... There is definitely a couple of pins sticking up there, so they should be sitting flat inside their little grooves, and they're not. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can actually tell. 
on the camera but there's definitely some damage to a couple of those middle pins and that port is going to need replacing so I'm going to do that first I'm going to replace that port first So to replace the port, I'm going to set my airflow to 50% and I'm going to set my hot air to 480 degrees and I'm going to remove the port without a nozzle and all I'm going to do is just heat up the area using hot air. So I'm going to put heat directly onto the port itself. So every couple of seconds I'm coming in with the tweezers and just tapping the bottom of the port. And what that's going to do is it's going to tell me when this is ready to come up. I can also tap the side of the port. I'm just give it a little nudges here and there. Almost ready. So you'll notice even though the port moved, I've not lifted it off yet. And I'm not lifting it off until it basically wants to come off on its own. And by doing it that way, it's going to make sure that we don't damage the traces underneath. Because I know 100% that the traces are melted and ready to come off before the ground legs. And by doing it that way, I'm not going to damage any traces. Next what I want to do is just replace the solder that's on there at the minute with fresh leaded. So leaded solver is going to be a much lower melting temperature when I put the port back on. So I'll replace the solder. Probably just running the iron across it with some fresh leaded solder on the edge of the iron. Or on the tip of the iron. So I'm going to add some flux. And you'll notice I'm going with the direction of these pads. 
and then I can go around in a circle making sure to not put any pressure on the pads and again it's going to prevent me from damaging them Okay, let's clean up. Good. Beautiful. Alright, so those pads do need a bit more solder on them. But now that I've got the lead free solder off there, I can go from side to side to put solder onto them. There we go. Just drag across and the solder will follow the iron onto the pads. So they're tinned. And now I'm ready for a new port. So the way that I install the new port is I'll hold the port itself in a pair of tweezers like this but I'm not going to put it near the motherboard yet. I'm going to heat up the area first. I'm going to melt the solder and then I'm just going to drop the port on. Once I see that solder melt, drop the port on. Push down. and press and hold. Okay. Um, that's not quite in line. So I'm going to reflow it quickly. And I'm just going to nudge it to the one side. Press and hold, move the air away. And let go. Okay. Uh, 
And if we zoom in on this now. You see that's beautifully lined up. And all of those pins should be soldered. And they are perfect. The perfect port replacement. No melted, no melted port. Every pin is soldered. No mess. No problem. Beautiful. That's a port to be proud of. Right. So let's do some more tests now. So if we look at the top of the board, so we come from the port, so just here, come from the port, and if we move on up, we come to this chip here, this is M92T36, so this is the power management IC for the Nintendo Switch, uh, this controls pretty much all power going into the board when it first goes in. And um, one of the common problems when we get a damaged port is this chip will fail and some of the pins will become shorted or some of the pads will become shorted to ground. So the way we're going to check that is we're going to go into continuity mode. That's a mode that's going to beep when we complete the circuit. And we're going to pop one probe on ground or use the ground shield. And we're going to test these caps here. These caps here this cap here and these caps here so no short no short no short no short no no and that one there is shorted so this cap here is directly linked to P13 USB. So that cap there is where the power will go out of the M92T36 and then it will go through to the other side of the board and it comes out at P13 USB. And P13 USB is on the back of the board just here. And the good news is it doesn't look like the chip is completely burnt out, which means that it should be okay once we replace this chip. Fingers crossed. We can't guarantee, but fingers crossed. So let's check this cap, and this cap is going to be shorted. There you go. So that cap is shorted. So it's P13 USB, which has failed, which is exactly what I expected when I plugged it into the USB ammeter. So I'm going to get you. I'm going to get P13 USB removed, and then I'll check that cap again for shorts. If the short is gone, then I'll just replace the chip. And if the short's still there, then it's bad news. So there's the chip removed. And doesn't appear to be any bridge pads, so we can just go ahead and test. So one probe on ground again. Beautiful. Short gone. Or is it? That's a bit strange. We shouldn't be going continuity from one side of that cap to the other. That 
That's a bit odd. I'm not sure if it's meant to do that. I'm not sure if those two traces are linked by an internal via or not, to be honest. I've never checked that, but I've just discovered that by accident, and I'm not 100% sure if it's meant to be. But that said, the short has gone, and if we turn the board around, and we take a look on this side now, if we remember this side of the board had a short on this capacitor here, and as you can see, that short is now gone. So, let's flip the board around, let's pop a new P13 USB on. And we'll see if it fixes the issue. If it doesn't, it's not the end of the world, I can always take my chip back off, if I need to. Hopefully, it gets it working. I'm not sure if those two traces are meant to be connected. And I'm also not sure if it's just because of the heat that's on the board at the moment. It could be causing it could be causing uh, low impedance on that line or on those lines, and there might be low impedance because of the heat. That is a possibility. So I'll get a new chip on anyway, and then we'll see. We'll just see what happens with the board. So I'm going to heat up until. That chip basically locks itself into place. It's not soldered yet. But now I'm going to add some flux. I'll basically just tack the chip down first. Add a bit of flux afterwards. And then this chip will basically solder itself. Should start to throw itself into line in a second. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so while I'm on the back of the board, I'm just going to clean up these ground legs on the port. Just to make sure that this port stays nice and secure. There we go. So that port should be nice and secure now. So what I'll do now is just clean up. Get rid of the flux that's around the area. And the flux that's on P13 as well. And we should be good to test. It should be cool enough to test it by then. But I want to get rid of the flux before the board cools down. Because the flux will remove itself a lot easier when the board is nice and warm. As soon as the board starts to cool down, the flux starts to harden, it makes it more difficult to clean it off. And it's always best to clean up while it's warm. Not too warm, we don't want to cause any kind of fractures in the traces by putting something cold onto it. But warm enough so as it doesn't cause the flux to harden. Okay, let's flip the board around and I'll do this side as well. Beautiful. Alright. Uh, my phone's just decided it wants to... Uh, going to sleep mode again thank you for that phone much appreciated 
Thank you, Sean. I appreciate that, mate. Right, okay. Thank you, Sean, for the three pound super sticker, mate. All right, so let me just get the rest of the board cleaned off and then we'll give it a test and see what happens with it. Fingers crossed it will work. That's, that's good to hear that with Sean, honestly. Really is, mate. That's what that's why I do this kind of thing. I just I just like to um teach other people what I know. Trying hard to be better. It only takes practice, mate, honestly. It really does only take practice. Right, so let's get the essential essentials installed on this. Let's uh let's connect up the screen and the backlight and the battery and that's pretty much all we need to test all we want to do is test at the moment we don't need to see anything else working we just need to test and see if we've got any change from the scenario we had before we replaced the port and chip we can install the board and we just want to see it charging and then while we're waiting for the battery to charge up then we can basically get everything else connected up and get the console screwed down I just need to remove the fan for a second just so I can get the cable from underneath it, safe struggling and let's get the power button as well Might as well connect the fan up. Okie doke. Right. So, like I said, essentials only. So we've got the power button, we've got the LCD, the backlight and the battery. And that's pretty much all we need for testing. Just to see it working. <coughs> right, so, ignoring that, that's just a bit of gunk off there. I do give them a clean before they go back. Let's see if we get anything different now. So, same charger. And it might help if we actually got that in line. There we go. There we go. There's the charging symbol. And this console is fixed. So that's going to take a long time to charge up because this battery is going to be very dead. So, like I said, while I'm waiting for that to charge up, because this is charging now, 
Uh, let's just check it on the other side of the port, actually. Make sure that we're charging on that side. And we are. So both sides of the port are working. The port is installed correctly. Uh, so while we're waiting for that to charge up, because basically it's going to take a while. Uh, so while we're waiting to save a little bit of time, because this is probably going to work now, this is probably going to work absolutely fine, I'm going to get everything else connected up. The one thing I am going to do is I'm going to disconnect everything while I connect up the touchscreen because we don't want to be blowing the chip. So I'll disconnect disconnect the battery and the USB just while I connect this up. Thank you, Retro. I appreciate that, mate. Thank you for the super sticker. <coughs> the card is legend. <laughs> Now, uh, this this ties in with um, this ties in with what I was saying earlier, mate, about pattern recognition. Um, eventually, once you've done that many, I mean, I've worked on hundreds of these. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not floating my own boat or anything. I've just genuinely worked on hundreds of them, and you get used to certain scenarios, if that makes sense. Like you, like you can look at you can look at your ammeter and just know what's going on just by uh you know you can know what's going on just by what's happening with the power with what kind of power it's drawing from the wall the same as lewis rossman knows roughly what's going on when he's um when his power supply is drawing like 0 0.2 amps um 0 0.2 amps 0 0.07 amps and all of that sort of stuff it's the same with this sort of stuff uh you get used to it and you kind of get used to what's going on based on what's happening with the um, power supply or your USB ammeter. The wiring off the off the cooler is rip off for the board. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean mate. I'm not sure what you mean there mate. Right so I'll get the digitizer connected. Let me just get one of these screws screwed into here first because once I've got the digitizer connected up I'm not going to be able to access this screw so we connect that up now and then or rather we screw that in now and then when we connect this up we don't have to lift it back up again to screw it down That feels plugged in. That connector is always difficult to get in. Let's route this cable properly. Actually, let's. Let's connect the battery back up so we're not wasting any time while it's not charging. Because this Wi-Fi antenna is my nemesis. Except this time I win. Everything else I can connect up while it's charging. So things like the speakers, the Joy-Con rails, that sort of stuff, I can connect all of that up while it's charging. Uh, one little bit of advice if you're going to be screwing it back down put this screw in before you connect up the speaker for the right hand side or rather the left hand speaker but it's on the right hand side by the battery because if you screw through that wire you're going to end up with an audio audio failure error on the um, on boot up so it'll charge it'll work fine until you go to turn it on and then it'll end up with an audio failure 
um, and it'll give you another error code. So if you ever get a random error code that's related to audio, it could be the headphone jack, but it could be the speaker being trapped underneath the screw and shorting out to ground. Which you wouldn't think will cause a boot problem, but it does. Uh, I learned that the hard way, trust me. I learned that the hard way. Right, let's get some thermal paste on it. So, the perfect amount there. And then, I'm going to clean this side of the heat sink but I'm not going to clean the other side because I don't I don't actually know where to get this type of thermal paste from so I always just leave that thermal paste there and to be honest the metal plate is a thin piece of tin or steel or whatever the hell it's made of um, that's not going to act as a very good heat sink anyway that doesn't make any difference to the cooling of the system not one bit right I'm going to start to screw this down properly now then. And it's still charging. I can still see the backlight on uh, behind the ribbons here. So it's still charging fine. Okay. Um, one thing I will mention just before I put this back together is there's a thermal pad that sits behind here on the BQ24193 IC. Sometimes that comes off and ends up on the board instead of on the plate. That will make a difference between the BQ24193 working and dying. Uh, because that chip runs very hot, so you want that thermal pad there to transfer heat away from it. Um, I know I said that this plate doesn't act as much of a heat sink, but for that chip, it does. For that one particular chip, it does. And I forgot to put a screw in this, I've just realised. I've missed a screw, in fact, I've missed two. Always want to make sure. Whoops, that's the wrong screw. Hang on. Always want to make sure that we put all of the screws back. Uh, yeah, it's um, ninety-nine point nine percent isopropyl alcohol, mate. How's it going, Chris? Welcome, mate. How's it going, John? Matthew, have I said hello to you, mate? Welcome, if I haven't, bud. And uh, Red Rules as well. Welcome, mate. A switch almost brand new, no port damage and no short on M9P13 or BQ, and it charges but doesn't power on. Um, hmm. 
could be the diode arrays. If the, if it's the board with the diode arrays, it could be those. Um, if not, then I mean M ninety two can be bad and still not and still not show any shorts. Uh, and also, it could be a um, a NAND issue as well, which would be unfortunate because they can't be changed. Oh, well, they can, but they're not not easy. Right, let me get this back together then. So like I said, we always want to make sure we put all the screws back. Or whatever screws are present when we get the device in. If we're working on customer devices. Okay. Right, so if I remember correctly, this did have a screw missing out the bottom. Another thing to point out, the screws on the bottom are non-magnetic. Right, well, that's why that screw is missing, because that screw or rather the hole for the screw is damaged so someone has had this apart that one's damaged as well but not as bad not quite as bad. So this has still got the charging icon in the corner. It shouldn't be much longer now before it turns on. Currently drawing 0.42 amps, so it's fairly close to being at a normal charge level. Not normal, but close enough. So slow charge is 0.45 amps at 5 volts and fast charge is about 1.3 amps at 5 volts. Between 1.3 and 1.5. Whoops. What I am going to do in a minute, once it turns on, I'm going to put it onto the 15 volt charger. Yeah, they do, mate. Yeah, they do strip even if you just look at them funny. I agree with that. 
They were pain in the ass, mate. It was like it when I when I um it was like it before I got my hands on it, so I'm not concerned about it, but you know. Oh well. Oh right, so the USB is currently drawing 0.44 amps. Between 0.44 and 0.46. So it should be fairly close to turning on now. There we go. Right, so that's fully reassembled, so I'll just need to wait for it to charge now. And once it's charged, enough to turn on, we can give it a test. Hopefully we're not going to have any more problems with it, but... Sometimes it comes back and bites me in the backside. But never mind. <laughs> come in to make a major play doll. Probably, mate, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right, mate. Right, um, so while this is charging, I'm going to go and grab a fresh drink. Um, and I'll grab the next console as well. Time we're on, 5 to 12? Yeah, I can probably do one more. So I'll grab the next one. I'll be back, I'll leave it on this screen.
Hello. I'm back. Right, this is taking an awful long time to charge. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hook it up to the uh, I'm gonna hook it up to the 15 volt charger. So I'm gonna couple more USB. And I'm gonna connect that to my Nintendo Switch charger so as I can reach. And then connect that. And that should be charging, but it's not. Huh. Right. We may have an M92 issue as well. Where it says it's charging, but it's not. And it's not allowing 15 volts through. Right, one second, let me just try this on the direct charger itself. Right, okay, never mind, no we haven't, it's my charger. For some reason my coupler's not working, and it should be, but it's not. Um, that's odd, this coupler usually works. Oh, there we go. There it is. Just a little connection issue there. Yeah, so uh, I can chat for a minute while I'm waiting for this to charge. Uh, yeah, just a connection issue with my coupler. Never mind. That's what I get for using uh, couplers, I suppose. We are 46 away from 8,000 subs. 46 away from 8,000 subs. That's ridiculous, that is. <laughs> I was on 5,000 at the start of the year. That's amazing. That's amazing. Unbelievable. Don't forget to clean the screen. Yeah, I've got microfiber cloths in the air, so I'll, um, I'll use isopropyl alcohol with the microfiber cloth and clean them off. Uh, basically, before they go back, um, because the, these are all part of um, business to business uh, repairs. So basically, what other businesses you can't repair, they're sent to me. Um, and basically before they go back i've got a dock in the house which i'll use well i've got like three or four docks in the house off my own switches which i'll use to fully charge them so they get fully cleaned fully charged and then they get sent back uh oh no this is working there well this will work uh or it should do i hope so <laughs> i hope it charges um uh, but yeah I'll, I'll give them a full clean and uh like, either way, whether I fix them or not, I wouldn't ever send it back with a bit of flux on it like this. Um, I'd still clean it, whether it was fixed or not. The only thing I won't do is, let's say, for example, if I find a shorty component. Um, so if I find a shorty component, like, for example, P13, what I've just changed. Um, I'll basically... Uh, I'll basically clean. Uh, I'll clean clean the board off, and I'll clean the um, the screen and stuff off. But I won't replace the components that I've removed if they're bad, because it's just pointless. Uh, but one of the things that you can't avoid is when you're working on the mat, you can't avoid stuff like this. Like you can't avoid this. You can't avoid the flux that goes on on the mat and stuff. I clean the mat after every job, but you just can't avoid it. There's no there's no way you can avoid it. You're going to get flux on the mat and stuff. 
just have to clean it when you can but you know but yeah if I find a faulty component and I, like, let's say for example if I removed P13 clean screen games run 10, 10 FPS faster <laughs> Uh, yeah, but let's say, let's say for example, I find a fault on P13, so I find a short here. Um, like the other night, a couple of nights ago, I had a, I had a P13 short. I removed the chip, it, and then I found out there was also a short on the CPU. That chip didn't go back on. I'm not going to waste another five minutes putting the chip back on. It's just completely pointless. If the, if he's got a shorty CPU and it can't be fixed, it's pointless putting them chips back on. Uh, but I also take my chips back off because I'm not going to cost myself money and the chips cost money um capacitors and stuff that cost pennies i'm not bothered about capacitors and stuff but when you're paying like 8 to 10 pound for a chip uh, i mean depending on the chip if you're paying like 8 to 10 pound for a chip and you can't fix it you're not going to leave them on i can't clean the screen i've got no micro microfiber cloths in the um workshop i can't clean it in the workshop it's got no i've got no microfiber cloths um so if I, if I scratch this screen, I've got to pay for it. So I have to clean it with microfiber. Jelly water and flux. Never heard of that, mate. I've never heard of it. I use um, King Bowl RMA218. Um, this stuff. But basically, I buy it in big tubs. And then I'll just put it into the tube myself. Because these cost like $3.00. Off um, AliExpress, so I'll buy me 100 gram tubs and then just. Um, I'm only here to see the screen get cleaned. <laughs> I'll got. I'll tell you what. I'll go and get a microfiber cloth in a bit. <laughs> yeah, so I use Kingbo, um, and everyone that I've told to try these, is, they haven't gone back to Amtech. Honestly, they really, ain't, they really ain't gone back to Amtech. Right, that's turning on. There you go. Um, yeah, so that was just completely and utterly dead. But by putting it onto the 15 volt charger, it charges quicker. Right. Touch screen works. Good. So the touch screen is working fine. I'll go and get a microfiber cloth soon. I can't clean it with anything else other than that because if I scratch that screen, I've got to pay for it. So I have to clean it with microfiber. I will clean it. Don't worry. Look, I'll keep, I even keep my own in good condition. This is my own switch. Look at the condition I keep my own switch in. This is my own personal switch. And this lives in the workshop. Genuinely, it lives in the workshop. Use some toilet duck. <laughs> You're quackers, mate. <laughs> You're quackers. Right, so let's test Joy-Cons. That Joy-Con works. That Joy-Con works. Or at least it picked up. It's probably dead. There you go, paired. Uh, yep, so Joy-Cons work. And the controllers are charging, which means the fan also works, because the circuit's linked. So I have a, a set process on what I'll do for testing everything now. And the next thing I want to test is a game. So I'll make sure that the game card slot works. And it does crash into Intruder J. And then we go to settings, data management, software. And we find crash into Intruder J. Delete that software that I've just installed. The only time I don't delete that is if it's already installed on the system. Always delete the software you install for testing. Let's test the internet.
I'm going to scroll down to my connection. Um, there is a hidden message in the Wi Fi password. So, if you're new to the channel, there is a hidden message in that Wi Fi password. There we go. Test connection. It's going to limit me to 40 megabits per second. Well, there we go. Software limitations. So, internet works. Should give an updated time in a second. Go on, man. Come on, give me the updated time. Oh, that is the updated time. It's 12 minutes past midnight. <laughs> Thanks, Toxic. Remind me to use that password next time we're winning all. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is, mate? You know, if you come outside my ex. Look. See if he picks it up. I'll give anyone who wants it free access. <laughs> Literally, I'll give anyone who wants it free access. Connect to me, it's free, look. That's an open network. I've got hardware firewall, mate. No one's getting through. Don't worry. Hardware firewalls, mate. <clears throat> right. So, all of that seems to be checking out. The last thing I need to do is test it on the dock. So, I need to make sure that it's going to dock. Uh, if it docks, it means the port's installed 100% correct. And if the port is installed 100% correct, it charges and everything else is testing fine as it is, then we're good to go. So I'm going to pop this on the dock. Sorry about the shakiness there. And I'll get a green light on my dock. Uh, I'll just knock my camera off, but never mind. I've got to go to capture card anyway and there we go so that's docking absolutely fine um, so yeah that's working absolutely fine everything's testing fine and it's good to go so this is another successful switch repair so this console was sent in because it had no power and by taking a look at the USB-C port I determined that there was some damage to the USB-C port even though it looked fine I thought it had been changed to start with but it hadn't but looking under the microscope there was some damage to the USB-C port so that had to be changed and there was also a short on P13 USB which was the uh, the which P13 USB is the graphics chip for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, when we've got a short on that, it also affects charging and stops it from charging. One of the common symptoms of that is when we're drawing 0.4 amps to 0.45 amps on a 5 volt charger, and we get nothing on the screen. And uh, that usually tells us that we've got a short on P13 USB. Uh, so by replacing that, we obviously get the console working again and everything else appears to be working fine so that's pretty much it right and cut there we go that one's done uh right i'll go and clean the screen 
I'll go and get a micro fiber cloth just to put you all at ease. Just to put you all at ease. Right. Um, they're mine. That's mine. So that can go back on the dock because it's dead. It hasn't been charged for about a week. I don't even use my switch. I really don't. But I will. Right, I'll go get a microfiber cloth just to put you all at ease. Now it's time to clean the screen. <laughs> Well, it's not broken now. <laughs> it was, but it's not now. Right, I'll be back in a sec. There we go. Brand new cloth. Yeah, I don't use um, actual microfiber cloths. I use um, these gadget and glasses wipe things. Uh, but I usually do it in the house after I've... Well, while I'm charging it. So when I take it back in the house to put it back on... To put it on charge, I usually clean it then. But just to satisfy you all, I'll do it now. Well, I do genuinely clean them. I don't let them go like that. I would never let them go like that. I'm getting, I'm getting some right shit if I did. So I use these, but I use them in conjunction with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Because it comes up really clean then. In seconds, look. Absolute seconds and it comes up spankingly sparkly. Well... As good as it's going to come up anyway. There you go. I even clean the back. I don't. I don't let them go dirty at all. Even though this one's definitely not been looked after. <laughs> use microfiber and premix cleaning with IPA. Yeah, I'll just use these. They cost like a pound for thirty of them from uh, from Morrison's. I'm not sure if you're from this country, but Morrison's is a supermarket in this country. Um, and yeah, I'll just basically. Use them, but with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, and uh, they come up fairly clean. So there's a little bit that wants to be stubborn there. I think that's actually under the screen. No, it's not. That's a pre existing mark, though, and that's not coming off with IPA. Oh well. 
that's a mark that was already there. This screen's already fa fairly smart, uh, fairly scratched, but never mind. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't. I, I would never let them go like that. It's just um, like even even down to these grills here. I usually use a toothbrush on them, and um, I usually use a toothbrush on them and clean the grill itself because. If the customer gets it back clean, they know you've taken care of it, and they come back to you. Then I know these are business customers, but they'll come back to the um, they'll come back to the company who sent who they sent it to. Um, and sometimes I sometimes I sit there and read the reviews for Console Repair London. And it's nice to see when I've worked on a device how it gets a good review. So it's nice it's nice to send it back to the customer nice and clean. It's the same as any console that I get in for repair, if I've got to take it apart for any reason, I will clean the um, the fan and stuff out and put fresh thermal paste on it. Even if I haven't got to take the heat sink off, if I've got if I've got to, if I've got to go inside the console, it gets cleaned. Just wanted to see it clean. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just buy the uh, disposable ones. I don't bother buying the reusable ones. So these cost like a pound for thirty, and I get to do thirty devices with them. Um, so yeah, it just it just makes sense to just buy the disposable ones. Uh, right, so I can put this to one side now. This one's done. I put the sticker on the back. <clears throat> and that one I'll go that'll basically go on charge in the air so it'll receive a full charge before it goes back right so now I've got to clean the bench again I'm going to tidy up my cables as well Because they're in a mess, as always. Uh, do 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 do. KFC wipes are brilliant. I've never. Well, to be honest, I've, ne I've only ever been to KFC about five times in my entire life. I'm not really a fast food restaurant type of person. I'd rather cook fresh food. Oh dear, right. Let's get this sorted. Um, someone said in the chat, how do I put it into the tube? Someone said in the chat, how do I put the flux in the tube? So I'll show you that in a sec, because I need to refill this anyway. So, um, Yeah, I'll just use these cloths for um, cleaning the blue mat. And I'll literally just move everything out of the way. That cheap scrap. Dead as a dado. Pour a bit of IPA, and then I can just wipe it all down. Sterilizes the bench, or sterilizes the mat. Gets rid of all the flux. Happy days, happy days. Sting my finger because I've always got cuts on them, but never mind. Yeah, so I'll show you how I do it. So basically, when I'm uh, when I need to refill these, well, first thing I have to do is take the nozzle off. But when I want to refill them all, obviously take that out, and then inside here there's uh, like an extra piece that needs to come out. So I have to grab it with a pair of tweezers and just basically pull it out. It's a bit difficult sometimes, but you just twist and turn, and it will come out eventually. You won't get this out if that nozzle's on, by the way, because there's not enough airflow. 
but when that's eventually out, you can use a pair of needle nose toys, uh, pliers as well if you want. But basically, when that comes out, let's pop that to one side. I've got to clean the bench again now because I've got flux on it again. Oh well. Um, and I've got these 30 mil syringes. Um, so basically, I'll fill these up with the tube, these 30 mil syringes. Fill the 30 mil syringe with the tube by basically just scooping it with, um, well, basically with just my prying tool. So I'll just scoop it out of the tub with my uh, prying tool, stick it into there, and then once I've filled that, I can just fill the smaller one and just inject it in. So, like that. and that's full now. So that's ready to that's ready to uh, reuse. That will last me about three or four days, I think, something like that. Probably three or four days that will last me, depending on how many I get done in that time. But then I can just push that down, put my nozzle back onto it, and then use the plunger. The only problem with filling it upright to the top is the plunger will just fall out for the first couple of days now. But if you've put too much in, just grab your tub. And squeeze some back out into the tub. Waste not, want not, as they say. There you go. And now I can use that now. So I've, got, I've got more than 10 cc's in there. There's probably about 15. Because 10 cc's goes to about there normally. So probably about 15, 16... Um, grams in there or whatever it is uh, 15 16 mil I don't know what to call it but yeah that's pretty much it you've had yours about six months yeah but I do a lot of um, I do a lot of micro soldering compared to because because you work on pretty much anything don't you? you you do a lot of uh, a lot of older stuff with through all components and stuff like that and uh, but I literally just work on micro soldering, so I do use a lot of flux. I use a lot of flux. Nando's is far superior. I've never tried it, mate. No, I use one tube every three or four days. Um, depending on... Well, sometimes I can last me three or four days. Sometimes I can last me a week. It just depends. Um, depends on what I do. So if, I get, if I get a whole bunch of HDMI ports. I don't use that much flux on a HDMI port, so... But if I get a load of, um... <coughs> a load of reball jobs and stuff like that, then I can use a tube in a day. Um... But, I know it's a little bit time-consuming to have to fill one of these up, but that doesn't take as long as you think, probably two minutes, and then 30 seconds to fill this up from the big tube. So, two and a half, three minutes, and I've filled the tube up. Um, when you think about these cost about four or five dollars on eBay to buy them, but then if you think about it, these cost like three or four dollars for a hundred mil or a hundred cc's, hundred grams, whatever it is, um, off AliExpress. So if I just buy one of them a month or every two weeks, three weeks, however long I need them, um, I'm saving myself money in the long run. <clears throat> um no I don't mate no I don't I don't generally repair older consoles um partly because I'm not experienced with them but another another reason is because um I just I just don't think I can charge the kind of money that I can charge on these so it's a business decision as well as a case if I'm not experienced enough on them right so, on to the next one then. It is pretty good flux, yeah. And if you buy it in... Um, if you buy it in the... 
100 gram tubs, you save yourself a lot of money. Ah, that's good coffee. Uh, the reason I don't use... Um, the reason I don't use any... Uh, the 20 gram syringes is because it doesn't seem to like coming out of the big tubes very easy. You have to put some fair amount of pressure on it. Uh, can I fix PSVs? No, I've never tried, mate. Yeah, the the king ball, mate. Honestly, it's a flux is flux. If you clean your board properly, I mean, you see, you all see. Uh, well, the new the newer viewers probably haven't, but um, you all see that I clean I clean the boards off properly. Yeah, that's the problem with Amtech is it's really expensive. Like it's way too expensive. I mean, you're literally just burning it away. You're burning your money away. Flux is flux. If you clean your board off, like. Yeah, it might help your solar flow a little bit better, but who cares? Because <laughs> I certainly don't. I certainly don't struggle. The only thing I won't use is that fake Amtech, because that, that stuff will kill you. Uh, right, well, my notifications just said I had a load of new subs. So should we see if we're at uh, 8k yet? Oh, so close. Come on, I want to get there before the end of the stream. Come on. <clears throat> yeah, it does. It stinks. It's really bad for you. It literally is cancer in a tube. It's really, really bad for you. Well, I used it once, never again. And then I, I found Amtech then. I was like, I ain't paying $18 for a friggin' tube of flux. You must be absolutely off your rocker. If you're paying $18 for a tube of flux, you're off your rocker. And it's alright for, it's all right for people like Lewis Rossman. Um, because, I mean, Lewis Rossman, number one, he buys it in bulk. He's, he buys it direct from Amtech. So he doesn't pay, he doesn't pay $18 a tube. He probably pays more like 10 but on top of that, he charges three hundred dollars for a board repair. I don't, so I can't afford Amtec Flux. With the rates I charge, I can't afford Amtec Flux. Well, never mind. <clears throat> it's like um, Tronic Fix as well. Tronic Fix doesn't do it full time anymore, so he can afford Amtec. Vince can afford Amtec because he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it um, full time. So yeah. It's one of them. Right, where did I put the ticket to this thing? It's around somewhere. It's on the floor. Lovely. Ah, oh there. Right, okay. So, got a bit of a fun one now. Got a bit of a fun one now for this one. So, this one has been sent in because it has an issue with the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi module. So... What that basically means is that it's probably not syncing controllers when it's in the dashboard. And the PlayStation 4, all PlayStation 4s, no matter what model, they are really annoying. And the reason for that is because of the way they communicate with the controllers. So when you're in safe mode, the way it communicates with controllers in safe mode is through USB. So for that it uses the safe bridge. But then when you're in the actual software, it uses the Wi-Fi module. And the Wi-Fi module is basically a BGA IC, what can't be changed without specialist soldering skills. And that controls Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and also controller sync as well. So if your Wi-Fi module fails, you can't just connect to an Ethernet and carry on. You've got to get it fixed or replaced because the Wi-Fi module controls the controllers. That communicates with the controllers. The Bluetooth module is on the same chip, and that communicates with the controllers. So as soon as that Wi-Fi module dies, it's game over. You can't use that controller. You can't use any controller. And you can't plug it in through a USB because it won't let you communicate. So never mind. Yeah, that's, uh, that's PlayStation 4's for you. But let's turn it on, let's verify the issue, and then 
I'll show you all how to replace the Wi-Fi IC. Like I said, it does require specialist BJV work skills. It's not an easy task. I'm not going to pretend it is, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to paint any pretty pictures around it. It's a very difficult job to do if you're not experienced doing it. So let's hook up a HDMI cable. Uh, let's turn it on. And it's got a disc in it, FIFA 19, okay. So we'll leave that disc in so it doesn't get lost. And if we go to the capture card, we're getting the PlayStation logo, so I'll let this boot up. Uh, what solder do I use? Uh, at the mini, I'm using um, Atten. When I bought my rework station, I had to spend like 10 euros more to get free shipping, so I bought some Atten. Um, solder. I think it's 67, 6337 I think. Um, I'm not 100% sure on the uh, chemical makeup of it. Uh, but I've also got this I've also got this silver line flux as well. Um, so there's that one and then I've got a, a, reel of, a couple of reels of uh, Atom as well. I've got some 0 0.5 and some 0 0.8 mil. Oh there's, there's the Atom, there's my 0 0.8 8 mil. Uh, yeah, it's 63.37. Um, I basically got that for free because I had to pay for shipping otherwise. Right, so as we can see, this is on the welcome screen, which means it's been factory reset. And the reason it's been factory reset is because Sony tell you when you can't connect your controllers to wipe your console. And Sony are a bunch of Muppets. And they're a bunch of Muppets because they know full well why you can't connect your controller. And as you can see, we have no controller sync. So I'll let that turn off. And you can see it flashing there. Plug the USB in, and you can see it does charge the console, or the controller rather. It recognises that the USB has been plugged in, or recognises that the um, power has been plugged in for the charging. So it comes up with the orange light, and you turn it on, and it doesn't work. And there's 100% nothing wrong with this controller, because I use it every day. So, basically now, let's turn this off. And let's load it into safe mode, and I'll show you what happens in safe mode. Yeah, I've got loads of um, Wi-Fi chips for the PS4, mate, yeah. Well, I've got them on donor boards. I think I've got one pre balled on the desk somewhere, which I did the other day for another job, which turned out to have nothing wrong with it, which was a bit annoying. It was a customer's controller, what was at fault. But, uh, yeah, I've got one somewhere. Um... Right, so with the control with the console off, I'm going to press and hold the power button until I hear a second beep. There we go, and this is going to boot into safe mode now. Connect the DualShock 4 using the USB cable. So connect the DualShock 4 using the USB cable. And that's not connecting in. That's strange. That's not connecting in uh, safe mode either, which is abnormal. Let me just see if that was a connection issue. Mm. Let's try the other port. That's the port I had it in before. That's strange, it's not even connecting in uh, in safe mode now. Okay. So that's not connecting in safe mode either. But there's definitely an issue with the Wi-Fi module. So I'm going to get the Wi-Fi module replaced. So 
I'll turn this off. Would I use Polish solar? Um, what's the difference? Uh, I mean, solder, solder, really. It doesn't matter. Really matter what country it's made in, to be fair, or at least not to me, anyway. I mean, this Atten stuff made in the Netherlands, I think, because that's where they're based. All right, so. To get to the Wi-Fi chip, the board needs to come out. There is definitely an issue. For some reason, it's not connecting in safe mode as well, which could be another issue. But for now, we at least need to get the Wi-Fi module replaced. So I'll disassemble this. Get the motherboard out. And then we'll take it from there. Um, if he doesn't want to turn off, it's usually a hard drive issue, mate. Normally. Uh, normally it would be a hard drive issue. <coughs> but it's hard to say without looking myself, if that makes sense. It's hard to make a, a diagnosis over the um, over a live stream, because I can't actually see it. Uh, but usually it's something to do with the hard drive. Right, so the good news is no one else has messed with this thing, so we're going to be the first ones inside. So let's void another warranty. There we go. So the Wi-Fi module itself is located directly underneath here. And you can tell that because that's where the antenna plugs in. Let's pop the hard drive to one side. How's it going, Constantine? Welcome, mate. Uh, welcome to everyone, by the way. Um, thank you all for uh, for being here. I really appreciate it. So this is the part where it can get a little bit boring watching the live stream while I'm disassembling, but I can't fast forward through life, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's the only problem with doing a live stream is the disassembly processes. Some people get bored.
Made a pop noise before the problem started. Um, hmm. That's strange. Um, it could be something on the motherboard failed. Maybe something related to the hard drive. Um, it's hard to say, to be honest, though. Um, the best thing to do is, if you're not comfortable working on it yourself, the best thing to do with that is to get someone to inspect it. Um, you know, if, you, if you're local, well, if, I wouldn't say if you're local. If you live in the UK, I'm happy to take a look and then get back to you on a quote, but... Um, if you're not from the UK, I would recommend giving someone local because shipping charges are absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> so I tend to only really do repairs for people in the UK these days because shipping charges are extortionate and by the time you've worked out shipping there and back and having to deal with logistics and actually organising couriers and stuff like that, it isn't worth doing for overseas customers. Uh, I do still... Where the hell's that come from? Get back on your... on the mat. Stupid ass thing. I'm going to take these screws out as well because I'm going to be cleaning off the heatsink. In fact, that doesn't even need it. That's absolutely spotless in there. So this is another case of this has just randomly died. Because this console has never been opened before, which means that this console has also never been cleaned before. So it's barely seen any use, and then the Wi-Fi IC has decided to die. So, I tend to see that all the time. It gets quite annoying, to be honest. The PS4 Slim is really not good at all. People like them because they're stylish, but they're really, really poorly designed. The design with weakness in mind. Let's put it that way. Alright, so I'm near enough ready to get the board out then. Let's just get that out. And let's remove these so I don't lose them. So this is the SIF 004 model. And the SIF 004 model is an absolute nightmare. The SAF model in general is just a really, really poorly designed console. Southbridge is probably going to fail on this in six months for no reason. And then it's going to end up with a six second blue light of death. Because <laughs> these models suck. <laughs> All of the SAF models suck. The SAF 004, the SAF 006. They're just really badly designed. I don't know what they changed, but it's not good. It's not good at all. Followed by the pros, yep. Yep. 1200 series was probably the best, yeah. I do agree, mate. Right, so, just to prove the theory that this console seems barely any use, that's still soft. That's still soft. That thermal paste would have done its job for at least another year. And, like I said, that's probably going to die in about six months' time. Because they always do. They're just really, really badly designed. I had to do a safe bridge on one of these a couple of days ago. Let's get rid of that before I lose it. So yeah, I had to replace the safe bridge on one of these a few days ago. I need to order some of them chips in because I'm completely out now. But they're not cheap. They are not cheap at all. Right, so I'm going to clean the thermal paste off. It's why I need to buy the tools and start working on consoles. That's, that's pretty... That's pretty cool, mate. Glad to hear that. That's what this channel's all about. Getting people to get into repairs. Repair your own stuff. Don't throw it away. We live in a throwaway society these days. It's really sad to see. The more people that get into repairs, the better. 
Right. Okay, so what I need to do then is I need to get this off. And I do have the option to use the BGA rework station, but for this instance, I'm going to use hot air. And the reason for that is because 99% of viewers are not going to have a BGA rework station. So let's remove it with hot air and let's show you that this job can be done with normal everyday tools. So I'm going to preheat the board in the general area. Then I'm going to add some flux around the Wi-Fi IC. I'm going to add a nice bead of flux here. All the way around. And then I'm just going to hover the hot air directly over the chip. So this is going to take a while. I'm going to move it around every so often. Um, then every so often again I'm going to tap the chip and see if it's ready to come up. If the chip moves and springs back into place and it's ready. There we go. So I'm just going to push the chip off to one side. So that chip's dead. There's no reboiling that can fix this. There's no reflowing that can fix this. That chip is dead. That chip needs to go in the bin. Uh, we're not going to reboil that chip. We're going to replace it. And the Wi-Fi IC can be replaced on these PS4s. Just like on the Xboxes, that can be replaced. So what we're going to do then is we're going to replace the solder that's on here at the minute with some leaded solder to lower the melting temperature for installing the new chip. Or rather, we're going to replace the solder so we can lower the melting temperature to remove the solder so we can get ready to install the new chip. Should I say? We're not leaving the solder on there, we're going to remove it so we've got a nice flat surface to work with. <clears throat> nah, it's fine, mate, honestly. That, the, uh, the secondary round is fine. Right, so first bit of advice preheat your soldering iron. So I'll save you a little bit of time. Yeah, you can reflow the um you can reflow the safe bridge in that RAM IC is fine, mate. They're not as sensitive as people think. They're really not. So I'm gonna replace the solder that's on here at the minute. That's going to lower the melting temperature, allowing me to wick away the solder a lot easier. And then I'm going to grab some solder braid and wick away the pads. So, bear with me a minute. 
because I've got to find some. Oh wow, I'm running very low on solar wick. Oh, that's not good. I'm running really low. Really, really low. Right, it's going to have to be 1.5 mil. Last time I was here, you were remaking the uh, charging cables for the iron. Um, still standing, mate. Still standing. Yeah, the uh, the cable I made is braided. It's um, yeah, it's a braided cable, so it it's prevents it from melting. Uh, really, really strong, mate. Welcome back, by the way, buddy. Right, so let's wick away this solder. Uh, unfortunately, the only solder braid I've got left is 1.5 mil, so I'm gonna have to use that. I would much rather use 2.5 or 3 mil. But we want to get these pads nice and flat so as there's no excess solder on them and the reason for that is because when we install a new chip we want that to sit as flat and level as possible to the board so as all the pads make a contact and if we've got any excess solder on there then the pads are not going to make a full contact let's get rid of the excess solder that went onto the ground pad and um, we're good to go. So I'm going to clean the board up now. I'm going to use some IPA and a toothbrush and give it a good scrub. Just get rid of all of that, that old flux that's on there. I'll just pour some onto the board. We've got a bit of a flux build up around the secondary ram as well, so I'll clean that as well. Okay, and I'm going to dry the board off using hot air. I'm going to get rid of any excess IPA. And tilt the board as well just to let it drip off the edge. There we go. And now we're ready for a new chip. And now I've got to find that chip. I have got one. Somewhere. I think that's it. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Right, so I've got myself a replacement chip. And what we want to do is we want to align this with the pads on the board. So I'm going to go under the microscope. Trying to get this in focus and actually be able to see the entire chip. I don't think it's going to happen though. Hmm. Or maybe it is.
There we go. What firmware am I using? I'm not sure, mate, to be honest. Um, I'll have to look that up and get back to you on that. <clears throat> right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to add a layer of flux. And then I'm going to spread it out evenly. on the board itself I'm going to take a replacement chip so this is a chip that I've pre-balled as you can see the balls are nice and uniform on that so this chip has been re-balled already you can buy these but they're about £20 for a chip and what you want to do is you want to get this in the right location and the right orientation but if you take a look here you can see that there's one ball missing just there so what that's telling us is that that missing ball there needs to sit there because there's no pad there so if we flip that around that's going to be in the right place once it's in the right place what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's lined up fully so i'm going to clean the flux off the top of the chip itself so I'll use a bit of isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab I want to clean the chip itself or the top of the chip I want to leave the flux on the bottom but I want to make sure that it's lined up properly so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to press down on the chip with my finger. I'm going to get it roughly in line based on the guides at the top in the corners. And then I'm going to press down on the chip with my finger. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to feel when the balls on the chip lock in place with the pads. Or roughly lock in place with the pads. So when it stops moving around and sliding about, I know that it's roughly in position. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as close as possible is preferred. And as you can see, I'm moving that now and it's not moving the chip, so that's roughly locked into position. And now that it's in position, if we take a look at the corners you'll see that the corners are pretty much perfectly aligned and now this is ready to be flowed back down and because this is leaded solder it's not going to take as long but I'm going to drop my airflow but I drop my airflow to to 30% because I want a more controlled airflow for this and then I'm just going to heat up from above and flow it into place so I want a more controlled airflow because I don't want the chip to be sliding around everywhere you'll notice I've still got no nozzle on the hot air gun and I'm just going to move the heat around and when this is actually soldered we're going to see the chip sink down and sit flat to the board And that looks like it's sitting a bit flatter, so I'm going to increase my airflow now. Back to 50%. And I'm going to reflow it once more. I'm going to add some more flux. And then I'm going to reflow it again just to make sure that it's flowed in place.
and that should be good to go. So the chip looks even. Nice and flat to the board. Solder balls are nice and even. If we look at it, look at it from the side. Solder balls look good, so that should be good to go. So while the board's still warm, I'm going to clean it a little bit. I'm going to try and get rid of some of this old flux, all the burnt flux. And then we should be good to get this reassembled. And fingers crossed, this chip that I took off a donor board actually works. So I'm going to give it a nice good clean. And just dry off the board again. So I'll put it on an angle so as the excess IPA can drip off. Enjoy the other side off as well. And there we go. So there's the old chip that we removed. So I'm going to dry off the bench and then I'll get the chassis back. There we go. Okay. I'll just clean off this old thermal paste there. And the rest of the console's nice and clean, so I don't need to do that. So I'm gonna take the board back. Add some thermal paste. <clears throat> Man, my throat's going nuts. Uh, I've been streaming a bit too long now. You have me a 7.99k. Seven thousand nine hundred ninety-one. We need nine subs. I'm not leaving until we get nine subs. I'm not stopping streaming until we get nine subs. <laughs> Cheers for that, mate. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to connect up the basics on this, just enough to be able to test. And um, this was about to get me again then with this stupid thing here so if I'd have connected all of this up I'd have had to take it all back apart again which is really annoying when it happens there we go By the way, uh, everyone subscribe to Stez Six Fix as well. Uh, Stez does pretty much what I do, but with all sorts of electronics. He's got a really good channel. 
Very underrated. In fact, I'll get a link. Let me post a link in the chat to Stezzy's channel. Uh, there we go. I posted a link in the chat. Everyone subscribe to Stairs Sticks Fix. He does pretty much the same as what I do, but with pretty much anything. Uh, he does a lot of retro consoles and stuff as well, which is pretty cool. <coughs> I posted a video seven, seven hours ago. So there's some nice content there to watch. All right. Right, so let's get the heatsink connected up. Or rather, let's get the heatsink clamped down so we can test it. Let's hope this works. Because otherwise, I wasted, I wasted time reboarding it for nothing. Even though I reboarded it off camera, I did it a couple of days ago. I was meant to use that one on another job and it turned out there was nothing wrong with that particular console. It was just a customer's controller that wasn't working. Um, and they assumed it was the Wi-Fi IC. So I was without it for a week and they could have just bought a controller. <laughs> Never mind. Alright. Refresh again. It might say 8K for you but it won't actually be 8K. It's just YouTube's really weird mate. I'll refresh it now. Um, let me just clean this off. There we go. Right. Nope. Say seven nine nine one for me. It probably does say eight K for me though. Uh, it probably does say eight K from here. Yeah. It's weird. It's really really strange. But the live, the live amount is seven nine nine one. But that will go to eight K soon. Um, it's just YouTube, really weird. To me, that's my live subscriber count. It's rounding up. That's what it's doing. Sub to stair sticks fix. Thank you, mate. I appreciate that. Right. So let's get this thing tested then, shall we? Let's hope it works. Whoops, we need the hard drive. We're not going to get very far without that. Thank you all for subscribing, by the way, and getting us to 8K. It's absolutely fantastic. Boo, YouTube lied to us. It lies to everyone, mate. Yeah. It can never truly be live. There's too many There's too many variables on YouTube. There's too many users for it to be truly live. So it just rounds up. YouTube knows roughly when you're going to get to 8K. Or roughly when you're going to hit the milestone thousands. Um, it's like YouTube will say, when you get close to a million, YouTube send you out your uh, thing before you, your plaque before you actually get there. Because they know you're going to get there and they know roughly when you're going to get there. Right, it's time for the moment of truth. Let's see if he goes bang. Damn you, YouTube. <laughs> so I'll just refresh, refresh, refresh for the next hour. <laughs> right, run capture card. There we go. Okay, let's connect the controller. Let's see if it works this time. Shall I wait? Let's hope we haven't got to replace the safe bridge as well. Hmm. It's not connecting. This could be no corruption. Could be no corruption.
And now I can't get out of safe mode. Which sucks balls. Let me try another controller just in case. Because I have got another one that I can double check with. Thank you, Andrew. This could be no, no bomb corruption, to be honest. It is typically an issue with the Blu-ray, but... Right, let's see if you're going to boot into the dashboard. Checking system story, so it might boot into the dashboard. I'll have to send my note at the rate I'm going. I hope so, mate. I really do. Let's refresh it. 8,003! Let's go! <laughs> Thank you everyone, I appreciate it. Uh, now there's no, there's no USB ports at the back mate. Not on the PS4. They're all front port only. There we go. 8,000 subs, that's absolutely amazing. Can't believe that. Honestly, like, literally, literally, like, a month ago, I was on 6K, 5K. Like, I'm, I'm not even joking. I was, on, I was on 5K, like, at the end of last month. It's unreal. It says plus 1,748, but it's more than that because it hasn't updated. It, needs, it, it has to update, but it's, it's like a day behind. And according to YouTube's... According to Social Blade, well, for a start, it said it was going to take 80 days to get to 8k. That's quite funny. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, look at these counts. Like, we posted. I posted the video on Sunday. Uh, and it says I got six, 40 subs on Sunday. And then 160 on Monday. 340 Tuesday. 200, 350 on Wednesday. 400 on Thursday. And 450 on Friday. But that's still got to update. That's going to be on about 500. Absolutely unreal. Right, let's see if it connects to uh, a controller then. Thank you, mate. How's it going, Chris? Welcome, mate. This is no corruption. Uh, this is going to be a job for tomorrow. I can't do that today. That sucks. It's no corruption, it's not the Wi-Fi IC. Unless the Wi-Fi IC doesn't work, but it's no corruption. That sucks. That sucks, man. Uh, uh, I live in Willingall, mate, in the West Midlands. Um, just outside Wolverhampton. It's not about it's not about whether he can solder or not. It's about the fact that he hasn't got the equipment to do it, and he is actually going to learn exactly what I did in that video. I spoke to him the other day. Um, Vince is going to be learning exactly that hand reballing. Very very tonic fix. That's awesome, man. Yeah, Steve. Um, Vince is actually going to be learning it very soon. 
He's already told me that. Hope for a good fix. Yeah, I'm I'm doing on this tonight. It's like half past one almost. I'm doing on this one for tonight. Um I'm quite tired. But uh yeah, I wanna thank everyone for hanging out and also for um for giving us to eight thousand subs. Um yeah, this year is going to be amazing. From what I've seen so far, this year is going to be amazing. Um, and hopefully we can we can take it pretty far. Fingers crossed, eh? Fingers crossed we can take it pretty far. When do I do my live streams? Um, I do live streams on Monday and Friday, but then I, Monday and Friday eight eight pm British. But then I do um, I do random ones in the week as well, depending on how I feel. Uh, yeah, but that, that's the um, that's the point of Vince's channel. He, he he's just trying to fix things. He ain't taking it. He's not taking it seriously. He's a he's an XBT engineer. So yeah, he's Vince is awesome. Vince has done so much for this channel over the past six months. Honestly, he really has so much for this channel over the past six months. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it there, everyone. Thank you all for hanging out. Thank you, uh, Stairs. Everyone, if you could subscribe to uh, Stairs Six Fix. Uh, he's got some really good content on his channel. Uh, he hasn't long got over a thousand subs, but he's he's gonna go places with that channel, and uh, he's got some pretty cool content on there. So if you could subscribe to him, that would be great. There's a link in the chat now. Uh, but from me, it's good night, and uh, thank you all for hanging out. Cheers, everyone.